So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was the was the almighty god of multiverse and had Renner as curvy waifu? Movie. Long ago, a boy dressed in an orange jumpsuit was handcuffed by the wall and he was bleeding and beaten beyond imaginable his eyes were red from the amount of sleep depraved as he wasn't allowed to sleep and they were big purple plums on them as well as giant bags under them his once spiky and blonde hair is downward and covered with blood his throat was dry and damaged his arms and legs have a lot of cuts on them. The boy looks down sighing what did I do wrong? I brought back Sasuke like they wanted. He's supposed to be here instead of me before any more questions are asked the doors open revealing a woman with long blonde hair and her companion a man with spiky albino hair the boy looks up to them with hope filled eyes hoping they're here to save him curvy sage and granny thank heavens the two of you are here I was arrested for beating up the last Uchiha when he was the one who defected he laughs a little am I right? However the two weren't laughing they approached the boy sat down and punched him in the jaws and stomach out what's the big idea? He shouted with what little his voice cords could consider shouting at this point. You little brat you'll respect us and refer to us with our names and titles, do you hear me? The woman shouted on his damaged ear drums. Tsunade is right brat we have tolerated your behavior long enough now well show you who's boss the man shouted on his other damaged ear drums. What did I do? The boy asked in a hurt broken voice. Hey, you actually need to ask. Tsunade mocks until her face becomes furious first your birth caused the death of the fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze, the Red Death Kashina Uzumaki, Bawako Serutobi and many shinobis and civilians. Second you have cursed the third Hiruzen and made him lose to Orochimaru. Thirdly you not only driven the last Uchiha, but you also beaten him to near crippletion. Fourthly you have been doing annoying pranks on everyone and spreading diseases and plagues all over Konoha because every food and drink you have is ruined one way or another. What? I didn't do any of these things aside from the pranks and beating Sasuke. The Kayubi is the one who killed the fourth and the others, the old man was aging terribly and lost because of that. Sasuke ran to the snake bastard by himself and I never spread diseases and plagues the shopkeepers are the ones who gave me outdated food and drink. The boy defended himself. Yeah right evidence and public witnesses say otherwise the man said. The boy got angrier the public has been unfair to me ever since the day I was born, and they never gave me the benefit of the doubt all because of something that isn't my fault he shouted but immediately coughed from the stress on his throat. It doesn't matter in three days you'll be executed for your crimes brat Tsunade said with venom. Who decided that? The boy asked weakly. The fifth Hokage. The advisors and both sides of the council the shinobis and the civilians Tsunade said looking towards her companion did we forget anyone Jiraiya. Jiraiya nods yes the daimyo and the nobles of fire country had also agreed to this. The boy looks broken no I, I I I it can't be he said as his voice gives the tone of sadness. Yes it can, so savor what little time you have left monster Jiraiya said the last word in a venomous tone as the two of them left and don't try asking the Kyubi for help I applied the five element seal on it. The boy looks down and immediately starts crying a lot since he kept all his feelings of loneliness, fear, lack of companions and nobody loving him, he shed a lot of bottled up tears into the grounds, however hell is still coming for the boy. Day 1 before the execution. The boy sat down broken after emptying all his eyes having mostly lost the will to live as today was a hate parade on him as the torturers had basically allowed the whole village in for one last beating the ones that hurted him the most were from those he thought of and even called friends they called him a monster and a liar Neji in particular said you said can be defied and I believed you but it seems you were lying you were born a loser. Lived as a loser and will die as one he laughs just like the Uzumaki clan it seems that their blood is that of trash and then his crush Sakura. You bastard how dare beat up Sasuke-kun. I asked you to bring him back safe not beaten. Sakura-chan I try he couldn't continue as she started beating him up. Day 2 before the execution. The boy was beaten again by the people this time verbally and was put in a hellish genjustu by Kurni and everyone continued laughing at his pain from whatever he's forced to see however the one that hurted him the most was his so-called sensei whom he took teachings to heart I am disappointed in you Naruto you ignored my teachings and didn't give Sasuke the benefit of the doubt and beated him the hell up. Naruto glares at his sensei I did give him the benefit of the doubt and he shoved not one but two chidoris in my chest he coughs from the pressure all you taught me was chakra control and some advices which I took to heart and Sasuke and Sakura didn't. 
His sensei closes his perverted novel and gets up he makes his way to him and shoves the 1000 years of death in his former student's chest causing him to cough blood you demon don't ever dare praise yourself over anyone much less Sasuke and walked away. Day 3 before the execution. The boy has remained in his position for a while now then he hears the door opening tch who will beat me up today. And how will they do it? He looks up and sees two figures an adult woman with purple hair and a girl in his age with short lavender hair, he's surprised since these two didn't come to see him like ever but he immediately started to get angry since they're most likely are here to beat him up too. Hurry up kid there's no one around whatever business you have with him finish it shouted the woman to the girl. The girl nods and says her thanks, she makes her way to the boy and leans forward Naruto ku. Just hit me I don't want to hear what you have to say Ju before he could continue, she kissed him in the lips, the boy's eyes widen as he looked up to her. I love you she said. What? I love you, you always inspired me by never giving up even when the whole world was against you and because of that I saw you as my role model and I fell in love with you she looks down gritting her teeth I just wished I was brave enough to tell you this before now. Hanada the boy's eyes produce tears of joy thank you. At least I can die knowing someone loved me like you did. Naruto I am sorry Hinata said giving him a comforting hug they stayed like this until the visit time was over and Hinata was forced to leave. Day of the Execution In Konoha's square everyone was gathered in order to finally see their wishes come true that the village's demon and pariah to finally meet his just deserved end as they shouted for his death. Naruto was nailed on the cross watching all these people whom he always dreamed and wished to acknowledge him, to believe in him to treat him as one of their own and to look him in the eyes instead of looking down on him. The very idea that he had these thoughts are disgusting him to no end now they're nothing but hypocrites Naruto thought to himself. The fifth Hokage Tsunade Senju is standing on the ramp getting the people silent people of Konoha we had long been the most proudest shinobis and civilians our long beloved history had served us greatly but today we finally will rule the world for our researchers and seal masters have figured out a way to take advantage of the Kyubi's chakra and create weapons. Seals and even bloodlines the people cheered in order to do this first well take the Kyubi from this undeserving individual Naruto Uzumaki the people booed at the boy's name Naruto as everything that a shinobi much less those of Konoha must not be. He took his missions as if they were jokes and didn't contribute anything in them. He then tries to take credit for them and finally driving away one of our best genins and beating to near crippletion just to have the glory for himself the people continued to boo until Tsunade silent them for his crimes Naruto is going to be executed by none other than Sasuke Uchiha, at least before his death Naruto is going to do one good thing in his good for nothing career and let Sasuke gain the Mangeko Sharingan. The people cheered as a healed up Sasuke appeared in the ramp looking like the asshole that he is with his smug smirk. Naruto let out a tch all the things that which said about me are in fact all Sasuke's fault not mine seeing how bad has Konoha fallen or rather they were always this rotten he just didn't see it. Sasuke made his way in front of Naruto cracking his knuckles are you ready to die Dobi? Don't worry be content that at least your death will have meaning in serving an elite Uchiha such as myself. Naruto laughs elite Uchiha you say. This causes a tick to appear on Sasuke's forehead there aren't that many of your clan anymore for the standards of an elite from them anymore, aren't I right? Sasuke shoves a punch in Naruto's gut getting a cough from him you'll respect me, you hear me. He shouted, then laughed your opinion doesn't matter anymore or rather it never did, you know why. Naruto just silently glares at the duckus because you'll die today and help me achieve the power my brother acquired by killing someone who's close to me. Naruto spits on Sasuke's face come on kill me I don't consider you someone who's close to me I hate you with all of my heart and guts, so kill me and see that it's for nothing. Sasuke grits his teeth in anger he'll shove those words right down your throat he shouted as he activates the Chidori and attempts to shove it as hard as possible at Naruto's chest, but a pillar of light appears around Naruto and everything stopped, Naruto looks around seeing everyone's frozen questioning what's going on. Naruto a woman's voice gets his attention he follows the sound of the voice and sees a woman with long crimson hair in a green dress along with the fourth Hokage. The fourth, Naruto asks then the two approach him they kneel down and embrace him in a tight hug and sob loudly and shed a lot of tears for him what's going on. Why are you hugging me? Why are you crying? How can't we cry for our own son? The fourth asks. Naruto is taken back what? 
Were your parents Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze silly the woman said after another what from Naruto the two had explained everything to Naruto how they're his parents and Kashina was the Jinkruki before him and that Mito was before her and how a mysterious man had appeared and used the Kyubi to attack Konoha and they had no choice but to seal the Kyubi in him but they made plans to ensure Naruto is safe. First they appointed Jiraiya as his godfather but he walked out on him. Placing three fail safes on his seal first one is Minato who'll stop him from being consumed far too late by the Kyubi's chakra. The second is Kashina who'll help him to control said chakra and the third which Kashina suggested as she had for a long time suspected that Konoha behind Saratuba's back had a major hand in destroying her home country whirlpool along with their clan and told Minato about it during the attack out of fear that they'll fool Naruto and steal their clan's knowledge for themselves while using their hatred of the Kyubi as a cover. Minato believed his wife and made a deal with the Shinigami that should Konoha kill Naruto he'll send Naruto to a new world to live a much better life and in return they'll be the Shinigami's most loyal vessels and the Shinigami agreed and there you have it. You two sacrificed me on purpose for a bunch of ungrateful bastards Naruto shouted while crying what kind of parents would do that? How can you be so cruel to your child? Minato gets down embracing his son more yes we're shitty parents you deserve much better much more better than us. I should have listened to your mom when she suggested to allow the Kyubi to rampage a little more while making a seal urn to put it in but no I made you suffer. Kashina looks sadly towards Naruto I hope you never find it in your heart to forgive us a portal appears, and a copy of Naruto appears replacing Naruto's possession and absorbs the Kyubi from him. This is, Naruto asks for confirmation. Yes it's the finale fail safe working its magic well be the Shinigami's slaves now but at least you can have a better life Minato said giving a sad smile to his son as the Shinigami appeared collecting them while the portal sucked Naruto in. Then time started flowing back as Sasuke shoved the Chidori in the chest of the fake Naruto copy while smirking but something wrong his eyes are supposed to be evolving by killing someone who was close to him but nothing changed the people chanted the death of the demon while Anbu sucked the Kyubi's chakra in a jar. Then Sasuke lets out a cry of rage as Naruto had the last laugh on him in his weak pathetic dying body. In the other world, the world was much safer and more modern than Naruto's old world but it wasn't much safer. Finding himself without assistance or money Naruto found himself jumping from one street gang to another until he was finally captured by the police who reformed him and let him out from jail after serving his time eventually Naruto opened an odd jobs business due to Konoha's people always ignoring him Naruto had to cook his own food. Fix his stuff, lying out traps for thieves, forge his own weapons and much more. Luckily for Naruto it seems due to the advance of modern technology the people of his new world didn't have as much skill as he had so he immediately become popular and made lots of money. Naruto had adapted to this new world way better than he did to his old one like he became a successful freelance worker and an incredible gamer but due to his past traumas Naruto refused to interact with people as friends fearing they'll betray him. However one day a genius named Kayaba Akahiko had invented the Nerve Gear a device that allows people to play games by being part of them and released the first DMMORPG Yggdrasil Online as the launching title. Being a pro gamer Naruto got the Nerve Gear and the game and customized his avatar as a lich but then Kayaba appeared claiming that Yggdrasil is now a death game and its survival for the fittest of course players started on each others in order to survive eventually racist fantasy was adopted and many human avatar players started attacking or abusing demi or hetero avatar players. Naruto found himself abused by them and just about they'll kill him something drops on them being a bomb killing them. Naruto looks up to his savior being a white armored insect with a red cape who are you? Naruto or in this case his avatar Momonga asks. I am touch me the knight answered. Why did you save me? Is it not obvious? Saving someone who's in trouble is common sense he replied giving a helping hand up to Naruto who with great effort accepts it. Ever since then Naruto tagged with touch and they saved other players like them eventually starting their own guild the Nines OOAL Gown which was eventually after recruiting more members became Ains Ool Gown one of the most powerful guilds in the game despite having only 41 members they conquered the seemingly impossible dungeon of Nazarick and turned it into their own headquarters. Made lots of powerful NPCs, and using their loads of money they got themselves cash items which gave them a huge advantage over other players and got almost all the world's items making them nearly invincible as none a single one of their members was ever killed. The guild continued gaining more and more power leaving their rivals the Yggdrasil Liberation Army. The Silver Dragon Knights, the Warriors of Hopen.
especially the Knights of the Blood Oath in the dust. Eventually the leader of the latter guild was discovered to be indeed Kayaba and after killing him the servers were shut down and everyone was free to go back to their homes and happy except for Naruto for this game became everything's to him in it he became what he wanted to be back in his old life and learn to trust people again and make friends with Touch Me and the others forming an unbreakable bound that he desired and longed for back then. But the hands of destiny had plans for Naruto after a little girl was about to be crushed by a truck Naruto pushed her out of the way getting his head flattened and dies. The Afterlife Naruto now an older man in his thirties wakes up finding himself in a chair in a seemingly empty purple colored space with chess themed floor and another white chair that has a drawer next to it in front of him a maiden comes that has white hair and purple eyes dressed in a nun attire found her seat on the white chair she looks towards Naruto with a saddened look and pity Naruto Uzumaki welcome to the afterlife. So I died him death isn't as bad as I once thought it would be Naruto says without emotion which causes the maiden to flinch. Yes I have seen your life both the old and new, I have to say you're the most person I pity she says with a voice of sadness. She composes herself a hem, I am the goddess Aris I am in charge of the dead of this world before Naruto could ask a question, Aris knowing it answers it for him yes, you're from a different world but you became a resident in this one so I am in charge of you Naruto nodded accepting the answer now Naruto being dead and living your life as a good person you have two options either you go to heaven or reincarnate, which one would you prefer? Naruto sits in his chair not really caring anymore going to heaven hell just be immortal in a paradise which sounds boring to him and reincarnation will be just starting a new life which he already experienced, Aris keeps looking at Naruto with pity but before she could say anything an angel comes to her lady Aris I brought back word from the council of gods they believe this man will qualify to that mission so send him to that world. What? No way Naruto was already used enough he'll not allow it again Aris shouts getting up from her chair and stands in front of Naruto in a protective manner. Naruto seemed to be touched by the goddess kindness, but his curiosity told him to ask the angel girl about what she's talking about for what reason do the gods need me. I am just curios as all like their gods can't they solve it themselves. The angel girl nods yes. The gods are powerful but to keep balance they don't involve themselves in mortals affairs they instead give assistance and guidance to chosen mortals to carry out their plans. Naruto nods so what problems are the gods having? It seems a powerful demon king had gained too much power and has ravaged more than half of a world. In order to deal with this the gods decided to send. Mortals who died from other worlds to it but not before equipping them with weapons and powers of their choosing in order to stop the demon king the angel then sighs but unfortunately many of them died and chose the other options while others like the one that has Aqua's company had instead chose to use their gifts to live happy lives and outright refusing to fight the demon king she looks towards Naruto with hope seeing your life had given the gods hope due to your past experiences in battle. Natural talent and battle smarts makes you the perfect hero candidate, so will you help us? If you do the gods will reward you. Naruto smiles I can have anything I want to the journey. When the two nod, Naruto's smile widens further I wish to have my avatar in Yggdrasil along with Nazarick and its NPCs along with all its items from my party members to the ones we bought and acquired Aris nods seeing all of this stands under one request thus making it grantable and did just that and Naruto was reborn in the new world as his Yggdrasil avatar in Nazarick's throne room accompanied by the NPCs. Just like last time Naruto or now Ains he adopted the guild's name in honor of their memory, had adapted well to the new other new world and took steps to defeat the demon king first by introducing himself in an adventuring persona moment the black knight along with his companion Nabe who is in fact a member of Nazarick's battle made Narbaral Gamma. Second using the first step became involved with underground gangs thanks to his experience he crushed them and took control of them. Thirdly using the second find economic ill nations and took over them by establishing the sorcerer kingdom. With it he made alliances with other countries and built a large enough army to attack the demon kings. Territory whom felt threatened used his powers to open a portal to another world which was similar to world. Wars 1 and 2 hoping to use the empire's army to crush the sorcerer kingdom but instead it was the opposite in a different fashion Ains had crushed the empire's unit the 203rd division and then revived them by using a revival item from Yggdrasil, in Yggdrasil when players HP hits 0 players can be saved using a revival staff, and discovered from his new ally Tanya von de Gerchuf that the gods will betray him if he grows more powerful and influential than he already is. 
So in a countermeasure using Tanya's powers that forces her to pray to a god to activate and absorbing the then defeated demon king's power aims had the gods in their knees and he continued looking for new worlds, dimensions and alternate universes and timelines to conquer and became the most powerful dictator in existence. Nazarek Ain's Bedroom The skeleton sorcerer woke up from his bed in a shock from the dream memory of who he once was, he sighs what was that? Why am I remembering this now? They most likely had disappeared considered failures Ains tells himself after reaching godhood Ains learned that worlds can disappear via the existence deleting them as if they were never there and seeing he couldn't find the hypocrites he believes that they suffered such a fate not that it matters anymore since I would just crush them with my above godly powers he sighs again but it would have been nice. Before Ains could think any further the doors of his bedroom slammed open revealing two figures in distraught. The first is a beautiful succubus with long black hair and deep yellow eyes with horns on top of her head and black wings in her hips dressed in a white dress that has spiderweb design in the chest area and matching white long gloves with a golden ring with a red jewel on it on her index finger the second is a vampire with silver hair styled in a ponytail and deep red eyes dressed in a purple dress and has the same ring on her index finger Ains Sama they both shouted at the same time. Something's wrong Ains Sama. I sensed with my wifely senses that you were in danger the succubus said. The vampire grits her teeth a little I sensed you were in danger with my beloved senses. The succubus smirked in victory for her better choice of words which causes the vampire to release killer intent and the succubus launches them back before a fight could take place the skeleton dictator coughed gaining back their attention no I am alright I just had a bad dream is all, so no need to worry yourselves albedo and shaltier. Not to worry myself my lord I can't bear you having any trouble much less a terrible dream let me go to the well of dreams and discover who was responsible for your bad dreams so I may crush them to cause you distraught the succubus albedo said while a black aura surrounded her and her eyes flashed. Ains decided to think after all he discovered that dreams can mean signs and warnings, on top of that since he conquered the well of dreams the source of dreams it means someone is messing with his property and hell be damned if he allows it to happen very well you have my permission you may go. Albedo kneels lightly as you command my lord and she leaves. After that Ains continued with his morning routine and found himself in his office doing paperwork but due to being a powerful overlord Ains had long figured out numerous ways to solve the bane of every ruler's existence from making clones to using tactical spells that don't make mistakes. As he muses about why he dreamt of his old life a noise from his ear snaps him back to reality he presses on his ear to activate the communication skill which was in Yggdrasil and was able to recreate it so his close minions can call him immediately yes, how's with me? Ains Sama it's me albedo I found the hooligans who were messing with your property and captured them, but there's something weird about them. Ains eyes flashed for moment in what way? They seem to not belong to any world you own, rather they are souls and don't belong to the many afterlifes you own. This caught Ains curious bring them to me now. Yes my lord after a few seconds a knock on Ains office doors was heard Ains Sama I came back with the intruders, may I come in? Yes the doors opened revealing albedo and a bunch of guards surrounding whom he could assume are the intruders being a woman with black hair and blue eyes dressed in a blue kimono and the other being a man with red hair and purple eyes dressed in samurai armor you have a lot of nerve not messing with my property but also using it against me he said with venom as an icy black aura surrounded him and his eyes flashed. We only wanted to contact you Naruto the woman said taking albedo and the guards back. Ains got angry where did you hear that name? Back when you were a child, we watched over you Naruto the man answered. This got Ains more furious what do you know of my past? And don't dare use that name again. The captured intruders sigh in sadness and look towards Ains with pitied looks we know what happened to you now I mean Ains and came to ask for help the man answered. Many of Nazareth came feeling their lords or fearing he might be in danger amongst them are Kokaitis, Demigir, the dark elf twins Aura and Mare, the battle maids and the Spriggan twelve. Ains Sama are all right? Demigir asks. Ains sighs a little and calms down seeing he released his aura throughout Nazareth yes, sorry I went too far. Mare then looks towards the last remaining supreme being with fearful eyes um Ains Sama if I am allowed to ask, who is this Naruto person? Ains looks down a little knowing that the time had came for his loyal subjects to know of their lord's past. He looks towards them he'll tell you but promise that this will not cause problems his subjects all nod and agree very well he'll tell you of one Naruto Uzumaki he was a fool, idiotic, annoying and naive human boy whom his parents died on his birthday and left him to the wolves. 
he was violated and hated by those around him for something that wasn't his fault he only had the village's old leader and a ramen stand owners as his only companionship he longed to prove himself to the people that continued to hate him. One day his teammate had abandoned their village and Naruto was sent to take him back and he succeeded. Was he thanked? Was he acknowledged? No he was punished for doing his job and was to be executed and just as he about to meet his end his dead parents appeared to him and made a deal with a death god to give him another life in exchange of their servitude. The subjects nods, August the leader of the Spriggan 12 asks his master Naruto's story didn't end, yet right. Ains nods correct when he got to the new world, he bought a game where he met a white knight named Touch Me. This gets everyone especially Nazarek's NPCs shocked that the boy of the story met one of the great supreme beings in a game Ain Sama, the knight does he happen to be Touch Me Sama? The aged butler Sebas asks. Yes it is Touch Me this earns Ains a collective gasps from the NPCs after Touch saved him they continued on recruiting the other supreme beings and begin their glory. However after the game shut down Naruto was alone again one day he saved a little girl from being crushed by a truck and died where he was tasked with saving a world from a demon king and he asked to be reborn as his character Momonga and the rest is history this got even more gasps for the NPCs to discover that their master and their creators are in fact humans and they have been indirectly insulting their supreme beings by the way they treated and talked about humans most of the time. Ains sees this knowing hell have to deal with this for the better of his time now but before that he looks to the intruders so answer me. The man nods I am Genshin the mysteriously blessed and this my wife Suzuki Senju we are the founders of the Uzumaki clan this get Ain's attention and he gestures. For him to continue after we died we watched over our descendants how they developed better and made a nation while the world was at war and continued to be on the top Genshin gets angry and how their so called allies from Konoha had betrayed them and let their enemies through their defenses to destroy them and how they abused and violated one of our last remaining descendants and how they continue using their knowledge for themselves as they own it. Ains nodded and told them to continue revealing that. Naruto's old world has with the sage of six paths who considered the council of gods untrusted and separated his world from them and turned his pantheon into masks to be used by mortals and that the two of them and the summons especially the toads got angry at how Konoha is ruining everything right now so the toads got a mask of the messenger god and used it to send the two spirits to seek help as well as using the mask of the time god to discover of Naruto's rise as Ains Ul gown and there you have it. We're sorry to remind you of your past Ains but please help us Suzuki bowed. Ains eyes flash enjoy well what you know this morning I was just thinking about destroying them. Albedo looks to her overlord with a wide smile the troops will be prepared by your orders Ains Sama she says bowing to her lord and everyone follows suit. Yes, tell them a new world will be added to your lord's collection. Ains stood in front of the gate that he successfully made to his old home. He was somewhat nervous going back to a place where he was nothing and a loser instead of the great overlord that he is now and has everything Ain Sama are you all right? Albedo asked snapping her master out of his musings. Yes, it's just I never thought he'll ever go back there is all he looks up and stares into the horizon. Don't worry Ain Sama you have your army and minions with you not to mention she shifted uneasily poking her index fingers then looked up to him with a crimson face your beloved queen with you. Hey. I am his queen you wide-mouthed gorilla shouted Shaltier as she jumped on Albedo tackling her to ground as they started another fight. Sai why does this always happen? He asked himself as he remembers that Shaltier's creator Peroroncino was a huge pervert but more tame than the sage and made any NPC by him to have a fetish Shaltier's fetishes of necrophilia. As for Albedo before the finale battle in Yggdrasil against Kaaba Ains thought Hell play a prank on Tabula Smaragdina, Albedo's creator, by using the guild's staff to change her personality from bitch to in love with him but he never got to see his surprise as they beated Kaaba and logged out the game, this now came to bite Ains now since he forgot about the prank when he was resurrected in his new life. Ains Sama Demigir had came to his master and kneels down our soldiers are ready at your command. Ains nods and lays his orders very well first me and Albedo will travel to Suna and convince an old acquaintance of mine to join us Albedo giggles at her victory while Shaltier is mad at him they returned their attention to their master Shaltier you'll go to wave taking anyone you want with you just like Suna. Wave is an important place for me and due to its geographical location will make a good base of operations, the seven deadly sins along with Keho players. Dancers and wrestlers will go and do their things while getting us resources along with money and most importantly will act as our spies his red eyes flash am I clear? Yes, 
Almighty Overlord they all said at the same time. Then let's go his eyes flashed again, and he turned around walking into the gate followed by his chosen minions. Unknown Location Elemental Nations Ains along with his chosen minions arrived at their destination. Ains looks at the supposed spies Meliodas along with his group who'll use the boar hat bar as their base to gather information and gossip through making customers drunk or entice them with bands cooking. The others are Keho players being the Stuchi and Saruga elite teams with some pros like Shiryuki with Demigyur who'll act as the promoter of Keho here their job aside from making money is to get a certain pervert to reveal his spy network and steal it from him. The fighters along with wrestlers will gather test subjects for chakra research and finally Sheltier's group consisting of herself with Lupus Regina Beta the werewolf cleric of the battle maids, Galland of the Ten Commandments, Meliscula of the same group, Sakata Jintoki of the Forge Awi, Brandish of the Spriggan Twelve and two of Sheltier's brides let's move out. Yes, Almighty Overlord Ain Sama. Land of the Wind. Ains teleported himself and Albedo to the hot desert land of the elemental nations Ains Sama your acquittance lives in a desert. Somewhat he lives in a village that is located in this desert I teleported us here about 50 miles away from it is to not draw attention to ourselves he buttons up his rope as to not show his skeleton body while wearing the red mask of envy and gloves, Albedo casts a spell and wears her black armor. They walk without trouble towards Suna and when they were close to it they can see a giant black smoke coming out of Suna and going upwards through the sky, seeing this Ains decided to pick up the pace and arrived at the village's gate stop right there shouted a guard revealing himself as Baki. Baki I see you're still alive after three years thought Ains remembering the Suna Janan from his time as Naruto being the sensei of Gara's team. Baki adjusts himself and stares at the strangers who are you, and what business do you have here? Ains coughed clearing his voice I am Ains Ulgaon the sorcerer king he said with a high and royal tone, then gestures at Albedo this my follower Albedo, as for our reason to come here we came here to meet an old acquaintance of mine he stares at the Jonan's eyes I believe you know him Gara of the desert, is he available? You're here for Gara, asked a female voice revealing herself to be Tamari, she meets the eyes of the masked overlord I don't know who you are, but I don't recon my brother saying anything about a sorcerer king so what are you up to? Ains isn't nervous in the slightest since he dealt with similar things before during his conquest and knows how to deal with this I assure you I am an old acquaintance of your little brother Tamari he along with you and Konkuro knew me by a different name. So how about we go together just the four of us along with your elites and Albedo won't be joining us as well as being free to add any and all weakening seals on me to ensure your safety he said with his calm regal tone that got Tamari and Baki baffled as no one would suggest such things unless they're extremely confident or stupid this a nice deal, right? Tamari sighs well I can't say no to that, but we were attacked last night by the Akatsuki and Suna is in an uproar due to our case cage Gara being kidnapped. So Gara is the case cage I should congratulate him when I see him Ains thought to himself but then caught on what Tamari said that he for a moment ignored due to being happy for his friend wait if your case cage is kidnapped then why are you here? Shouldn't a rescue squad had left to search for him? Tamari grits her teeth in anger as to what the stranger said is true yes, but unfortunately we don't have the resources to go after them, so we called for help until they arrive, well wait. You don't need to wait any longer my beloved sand nymph. Your elites are here shouted a voice filled with arrogance. Ains turned around and had to keep himself in check at the people who had arrived or his old team that he loved and trusted once. Being the arrogant Sasuke who despite not getting his Mangekio still got training from nearly every Jonin in Konoha as well as weapons made using the scrolls of the Uzumaki clan, Ains isn't impressed with the Uchiha as he doesn't hold a candle to his minions he would put him somewhere near Clementine but that's being nice that dog chick would mob the floor with the Uchiha brat 100 times over. Then there's Kakashi the man who betrayed the teachings of his father and will of his fallen teammate, reading the perverted novels written by another traitor to the family Jiraiya whom Demigyur will be dealing with. Like always the man is living in his little world uncaring aside from glancing at the pair of strangers from time to time. Then there's Sakura a girl whom he gave his heart to and crushed it multiple times, Ains can only sigh in sadness as the girl hasn't improved at all during the three years rather, she's even weaker than before sensing her chakra she's only support. Finally, a new face being a pale boy coming from Root who acts both as Danzo's spy and as his replacement, giving an obvious fake smile. Tamari sighs in anger I am not going to be your concubine Uchiha she glares angrily at him why don't you drill this into your head already. 
Sasuke smirks arrogantly while staring at the Suna Kunoichi with lust that of course gets Sakura angry mistaking the look to that of love you'll be mine along with the Hyuga. Anyway, before we start our search for Gara, we need to save Konkuro who was poisoned by the Akatsuki Baki said bringing everyone back at the task at hand. Ain's eyes flash behind the mask take me to him now, he commanded. After a while they entered Suna's hospital where the poisoned Konkuro is lying on his bed breathing heavily and sweat bores out of him like waterfalls, Sakura smirks cracking her knuckles a little well this the job for him she couldn't continue her sentence as Ains violently pushed aside making her fall on the ground making his way towards the poisoned Konkuro, Sakura gets angry at what's in her mind an idiot hey idiot what's the bee? Albedo moved in a blur and had her axe at Sakura's throat I suggest you keep that foul mouth of yours shut not only is it disturbing patients but it's also a great sign of disrespect to Lord Ains Albedo said in a whispered tone filled with venom, malice and killer intent making the fangirl turn pale. Albedo looks at her with contempt behind her helmet having heard her master's past from the two strangers who were now their allies working with Demigir for his chakra research and how this girl was a bitch not appreciating her lord's love which she craves that she has to hold herself from killing the girl in the most brutal way imaginable by orders from her master who would like to leave her for last. Kakashi Sasuke and Sai on the other hand were caught off guard how this woman wearing heavy armor had moved in such way like the armor isn't holding her back at all not to mention she fouled their chakra sensors rather she didn't have any which is weird since it's a life energy. Ains had approached the paled Konkuro and positioned his hand above his body casting a checking spell to look for the problem to heal it after finding it. Ains raised his other hand as a black circular shape appeared which his hand entered grabbing something and the circle of darkness closes off as soon as he pulled out his hand holding a bottle with red liquid inside. He lays his hand under Konkuro's head as he raises him and forces him to drink the liquid. Tamari seeing this attempted to interfere asking the man what he's doing to her brother but Albedo stopped by appearing in front of her in a blur making Kakashi and Sai confused again while Sasuke grits his teeth in anger how this chakra-less woman is faster than him. As Ains finished Konkuro's breathing retuned to normal as his body gained back color and fell asleep as Ains laid him down, the doctors look at the sorcerer king with fear as he stares at them behind his mask and gets up then makes a gesture to check on Konkuro after another gesture the medics gulp approaching Konkuro. The medics gain a look of surprise master Konkuro he's alright no he's better than alright the chief medic cried out shocking everyone in the room but Albedo who smiles behind her helmet at her lord's miracles. Tamari rushes towards Konkuro and sees that he's better now, she looks at the overlord with bugged out eyes what did you do? I healed him using a special potion Ains answered simply before Tamari could ask more about the potion Ains stops her your brother is alright he'll be okay after some rest, now that he's safe and the rescue squad is here, can we start saving Gara? Tamari nods seeing this sorcerer king having saved her younger brother maybe he'll save her other brother yes she affirms before bowing and thank you for saving my brother. Mention nothing of it it's only sensible to help an old friend Ains said raising his hand. Before Tamari could ask exactly how he's friends with her as well as her brother's a banshee screams you how did you heal him without chakra? Rather how are alive without it as well as this woman? Pointing at Albedo. Ains laughs the answer is simple through magic. Sasuke gets angry seeing this man is mocking them or more specifically in his mind him what do you mean magic? There's no such thing. Ains laughs the world, no the universe no existence is larger than you think little Uchiha. Sasuke grits his teeth more ready to attack this man but is held off by his teacher alright let's go save Gara. do you have anything that belongs to him? Tamari nods and gets the case cage's hat out which floats making everyone confused as a pink ball surrounds it. Their instincts make them look towards the overlord who has his hand gestured forwards while also being enclosed inside a pink ball, he stops and the hat falls back to Tamari's hand I found him he's in the land of rivers inside a cave hidden behind a large rock Ains announced shocking everyone how he found this information using this mysterious power, the overlord on the other hands looks at Albedo let's go Albedo. Yes my lord she said kneeling as her master opened a black portal which they went through and like with the circle it closed as soon as it did. The elemental people are completely shocked seeing this many miracles in one day. The Suna shinobis pray this stranger is really their ally while the Konoha shinobi are either livid or on their guard, Sakura while surprised believes that Sasuke would do similar things once his Mangekio is unlocked, Sasuke is livid seeing this man as a major steeping stone for him to kill his brother, 
Kakashi keeps note of what he saw and would report it back to the Hokage and Jiraiya while Sai was like Kakashi but would report it back to Danzo. Land of Rivers Ains and Albedo went through the portal arriving at their location a land filled with clean water rivers and lots of slopes. They find themselves in front of a cave blocked by a large rock that has a red seal on it. Ains moves forwards inspecting the seal while using a magic spell on his eyes to see through the rock seeing the Akatsuki are beginning their ritual of taking the tailed beast out of Gara using a giant statue which they use its fingers to stand on. On the fingers are nine figures wearing their black robes with red clouds aside from two of them all of them appear as holograms Albedo stand back Ains ordered stepping back a little, Albedo nodded and stepped back letting her lord do his magic. Ains pointed his hand forward while having his index and middle finger risen and he shouts destroy as a purple energy envelops his hand which attack the rock making it disappear along with the seal. The Akatsuki members are shocked seeing this as Ains approaches them and sends a fireball attacking the statue making it scream out in pain while returning all the chakra it sucked, the two real members fall out of the statue landing on their feet. This a failure shouted the leader Pain Deidre, Sasori get rid of them and contact me once you're done so we can resume he ordered making the statue disappear in a smoke screen as he and the other members disappeared as well. Getting up Deidre looked at the Nazarek duo with a bland glare you guys are really bothersome you know that. Do you know how long it took us to get inside Suna and catch this guy? Ains and Albedo remain silent which angers the explosive blonde Moroi didn't you hear me? Albedo releases killer intent we heard you and yelling in Lord Ains presence as heresy she said shouting the last bit making the explosive blonde be taken back at this woman's temper. Albedo looks towards her master my lord please allow me to destroy this foul creature. Ains nods as you wish. Hey. Don't look down on me Ididra was about to continue but Albedo charged forward making him back off before the axe caught off his head. Albedo starts laughing staring at the blonde Akatsuki member eyes as her own shine yellow behind her helmet you're quite pathetic all of you foul weak lifeforms, you only know how to run your mouth and just to be clear I allowed you to back off in order to entertain me Didra tchs as he puts his hands inside his pockets and throws acrobatic explosives towards Albedo who easily parries them off. Well that leaves us Mr. Ains said asking. Sasori of the Red Sands the chubby member says as he takes off his robe revealing his puppet he launches poison needles from his mouth which are countered by Ains affinity protection making them disappear at touching the overlord's body. Sasori confused launches more needles and ends up with the same results. Ains disappeared in a blur making Sasori taken back as a powerful force lands on his puppet destroying it. Sasori recovered taking off a black robe he was wearing revealing his other puppet that looks more like his real past self he'll make you pay for destroying Hiroko for he's one of my favorites he said in an angry bland tone towards the sorcerer king whom gestures to Sasori to bring it on, Sasori feels rage at being underestimated and brings out his favorite puppet the fourth case cage. Back to Deidre the blonde is breathing heavily riding his clay bird while a cloud of smoke stands in front of him I did it that bitch is dead he then laughs hey, bitch how do you like my art? Be grateful for it was the last thing you saw before dying he starts laughing manically before he feels a sharp steel object presses against his head, he looks up seeing albedo being fine and without a scratch. I tolerated you long enough foul creature now die she says. Deidre sweats waterfalls as he smiles nervously you know when I called you a bitch, I meant it as a complete he couldn't continue pleading as albedo cut his head in half making the clay bird fall as it melts. Back to Ains he successfully destroyed the fourth case cage without much effort making Sasori use his triumph card releasing all his puppets and sending them at the sorcerer who keeps destroying them, Ains appears in front of Sasori who's kneeling before him are you done already Mr. Sasori? Sori prostitutes himself yes he answered before smirking and using his finger using a fallen puppet to attack the sorcerer from behind with a needle that hits him making fall and die, Sasori starts laughing manically and gets up overjoyed at the fallen corpse in front of him only to feel a pierce at the only human part of him. Shatter Kyoka Sugestu said the regal voice of the overlord behind Sasori as he hears glass shattering along with the corpse, he sees a katania piercing his only organism and follows it seeing the overlord holding it. How? I putted you under the illusion of this Zanbakudo and as you see not even the Uchiha clan Shirangan can come to compare Ains said with arrogance. Sasori smiles towards him you're powerful like a god who descended from the heavens above, perhaps you'll be of use to me I have a spy inside Orochimaru's circle he's his most trusted subordinate we were supposed to meet two weeks from now at the bridge of Kusa, 
but be careful he may not be as loyal as I once thought. Ains kept what he heard in his memory while the puppeteer died, the overlord removes his Zanbakudo from him as he falls down on his face incredible as ever my lord you showed this weakling his place at your feet said Albedo praising her lord and having her helmet off revealing her beautiful face with a large smile accompanied by a huge blush you were quite dreamy when you explained your Zanbakudo ability she starts her crazy mumbling as Ains sighs making the Zanbakudo return to its original form. This weapon was made by Chief Blacksmith one of the NPCs made by his friends being Amano Mahitotsu their main blacksmith who made the character as his apprentice back to the sword when Ains invaded Soul Society one of the members of the Zero Squad was the blacksmith of the Shinigamis thus his Bankai mode was replicating the other Zanbakudos this impressed Ains as after absorbing the Soul King he grabbed the soul of the Shinigami and took his Zanbakudo and had it remodeled and improved by Chief Blacksmith. It was incredible as it continued serving Ains being one of his favorite weapons. Ains continues sighing at Albedo's daydreams looking away from the succubus as his eyes landed on Sasori's collection Albedo return to Nazareth and take these puppets with you they could be useful after Chief Blacksmith along with the dwarves improve them. Albedo goes back to her serious mode and bows to her master yes my lord, anything else. Now that you mention it Ains said approaching Gara and after casting a spell on him sees that he's alive. He gets down and focuses his magic on Gara's seal as Green Flash appears taking the form of a ball. WHH what's going on? Yelled a small terrified voice inside the ball looking around why is my voice like this? He panics the creature inside the ball being a tanuki with sand fur. Albedo looks at the creature with curiosity Lord Ains this creature is it. Ains nods yes, it's Shikaku the one-tailed beast one of the nine-tailed beasts. Who are you? You don't have chakra Shikaku asked terrified how this person had not only taken him out of his seal but did it without chakra. Bo you weakling you're in the presence of Ains Ulgaon the conqueror, the sorcerer king, the undead king and the master of the great tomb of Nazareth Albedo announced in a booming voice of anger Bo. The tailed beast is terrified as he's imprisoned in a far more powerful seal that isn't made out of chakra and bows trembling before the overlord please forgive my ignorance oh great king of sorcery. Ains shakes his head no need I am here to succeed where the sage of six paths failed he looks at the tiny tailed beast do you know how to revive the old system before the sage cut this world off from the other ones. Shikaku sits back rather impressed hoping this stranger is the child his father spoke off now that you mention it, father or the sage as you call him told us not to use the statue of the outer path along with the ten tails rings, oh also the masks of gods. Albedo stares at the tailed beast with suspicion why are you telling us this? The sage is your father so why are you disobeying him? Shikaku sighs looking at the succubus listen I really hate disobeying father's wishes but he sighs deeply things aren't getting better rather they're getting worse and the supposed child of prophecy is dead meaning the world is doomed, so there's nothing for me and my siblings anymore aside from being weapons he takes another sigh one of anger and we're tired of this so if you claim you're succeeding where father failed then it'll help you since it's useless to do otherwise. Ains chuckles good observation and don't worry I promise you in the name of Ains Ulgaon will not let you be used as weapons again he hands over the ball to Albedo then gets a cube out which sucks in Sasori's puppets which he hands over to her. Finally he approaches the corpse of Deidre and takes his ring off and hands it over to Albedo along with Sasori's ring Albedo like I said take these puppets to our blacksmiths, take the rings to our researchers and the tailed beast to the dark elf twins floor. Albedo bows yes my lord your wish is my command she looks at her lord with concern what will you do. Like I said Gara is an old friend so he'll catch up with him and make an alliance between us Ains said before firing rapid fireballs around the cave making it black with this damage the rescue squad will think that the Akatsuki members are blown up and nothing left of them. Albedo once again smile brightly your wisdom and mind are as sharp as always Lord Ains she opens the portal and enters leaving her lord to catch up with his friend. Land of Waves the once prosperous country is now under surveillance from the tyranny of Konoha as they refuse to be a puppet state thus promoting Konoha to use their newfound powers and crush the people of Wave and executed Tazuna the bridge builder as he refused to rename the great Naruto bridge to the great Sasuke bridge, despite that many people tried to repel only to be crushed. At the great Sasuke bridge two Konoha shinobi are standing on guard carrying spears man these people really were something huh. 
His companion smiles and nods yeah by the end we won and tomorrow we'll execute the last of the repels and add this land to our borders he smiles sickly with wave under as well weaken the other lands making them unable to receive supplies turning the tides in our favor. When wasn't it in our favor? His companion asks sarcastically as they both laugh still it's great we finally removed that demon's name from this bridge and made it better his companion nods seeing how not did the bridge's name change but its design being larger with flags of Konoha the Senju clan and the Uchiha clan around it and of course a giant golden statue of Sasuke in his prideful pose on the side of the middle. Before they can continue their propaganda of Konoha's superiority they see eight figures approaching being Sheltier's group the two men raise their spears as they were ordered to not allow anyone in today by their commander Shikimaru Nara hold it identify yourself. Sheltier looks around the bridge in total disgust this bridge is ugly. True it's disgusting with an all over design brandish said in her monotone voice. Shaltier then gazes at the statue of Sasuke and vomits a little in her mouth you and here I thought this bridge can't be more disgusting, who has a statue of someone like that? Doesn't Lord Ains do the same? Galland asked. Shaltier sends a powerful aura on Galland making the demon fall on his knees how dare you compare this ugly statue to Lord Ains statues. Lord Ain's statues don't only look better but they have use aside from showing his people his beauty. We said identify yourselves yelled one of the spearmen looking angry at the group how dare you mock Konoha's finest creation. Shaltier and her group look at the spearmen with disgust evident on their faces beta get rid of them Shaltier ordered snapping her fingers. Yes milady said the werewolf in a happy childlike tone approaching the two men as they take their positions before they knew with their heads rolled off seeing their headless bodies as their necks jets out blood, their souls leave their heads as Galland and Meliscula eat them. Inside Wave The people of Wave were gathered in the plaza forced to witness the execution of their own people as the Konoha shinobi stare down on them. On the podium Shikimaru along with Team Guy stand seeing the people of Wave giving them stares of anger and hatred Yash soon will make them turn these frowns upside down when we finally execute the last unyouthful supporters of that demon. Yes, they'll acknowledge their fate as weaker people who live under the strong Neji said in an arrogant tone befitting of his clansmen. Yeah the world will be better with the leaf as the supreme ruler's tenton said swinging around her new weapon being Zabuza's sword which she stolen from his grave and improved it with seals. Troublesome let's get this over with Shikimaru said going forwards while the people of Wave are jeering him after his fellow shinobis silence them Shikimaru starts speaking people of Wave for the longest time you were put under the influence of the accursed demon known as Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto is a hero shouted a woman. Yes, he's the true carrier of the first Hokages will unlike you monsters shouted a man. After being silenced again by the shinobis Shikimaru continued now to purify this land and its people of the demon's influence well execute the last of the unfortunate souls that were caught under his influence. They're not under his influence a boy shouted. You guys are the real demons shouted a girl. After another silence Inari along with his mother and other citizens were brought forward crucified now let's commence the execution Shikimaru said, but before he could do anything. They started hearing voices following them they saw Tazuna and the other citizens along with warriors they executed approaching them. What's going there dead? shouted a Konoha Chunin. It must be one of the demon's tricks shouted a Jonin. I can't believe it shouted an Anbu but their eyes along with other Konoha Shinobi who refused to believe this burst into flames as they scream in pain holding their eyes. Ho, oh, it seems these tyrants are weak they fell easily to my commandment Meliscula commented disappointed. The Konoha shinobi take offense to that as they charge forwards at the demon but are stopped as the corpses start biting into them crushing their shoulders and eat them. Monster shouted a Jonin who activated the seal of the wood release and crates needle vines sending them towards the commandment of fate but they burst when they touch her impossible the wood release is the most powerful bloodline he commented scared as Meliscula stared at him forcing his soul out of his body as she eats it. Soon Jintoki enters the field cutting through shinobis like butter living up to his nickname as the white Yakusha. Brandish uses her magic to minimize the size of the weapons and jutsus that come towards her while sending small knives to scratch her opponents and then oversize their scars killing them. Beta like Jintoki cuts through the shinobis with a huge sadistic smile on her face. Back to Shikimaru seeing the situation he attempts to escape and request backup but is blocked by Shaltier, her brides and gallant where are you going coward? Shaltier asks mockingly. We're not cowards you unyouthful monster Lee shouts attempting a leaf hurricane only to be blocked by one of the brides who proceed to lock on his ankle crushing it. 
making him wail in pain as he holds it then she starts kicking him repeatedly and finally crush his back as he cries out in pain. Seeing this Tenten and Neji were about to jump in but they are blocked by Galland and the other bride respectively going somewhere. Galland asks sarcastically Tenten enraged swings her sword in a wide arc to attack the demon who easily block it, Tenten smirks as she activates a seal which freezes Galland. Just as Tenten was about to celebrate her victory she smells fire as Galen's body burns away the ice making the Kunoichi back off demons are creatures that live in the hottest spots of purgatory, so these icicles of yours are nothing to me. So, you're a demon Tenten said through her gritted teeth or in leagues with Naruto. Who? Naruto the Kyubi who destroyed Konoha Tenten yelled as she swings her sword again, but Glan disappears in a blur appearing next to her as he kicks her hard making her fall as he catches the sword. Galland laughs at the young Kunoichi you never handled a sword before, right? He looks at her for confirmation as she sends justice at him but they're nullified by his shields which he received from Ains making Tenten gasp I can tell that you're not used to using swords and this sword is probably stolen. Tenten grits her teeth how dare you everything belongs to Konoha and as a Konoha shinobi this sword is mine she shouted before gasping as a purple electric field goes through her body turning her to stone. Shikimaru sees this with bugged out eyes what did he do? Nothing. She lied to him anyone who lies to the commandment of truth turns to stone Shaltier answered her prey who till now was watching the fights making his opponent bored. Galland continues laughing at the stoned Konoha girl as he swings his weapon crushing her into millions of pieces. Neji and Lee see this attempting to avenge their friend but the brides catch them. Lee has his blood drank by the bride as his body becomes pale and falls while Neji sends powerful palm strikes at the bride fighting him making her stop. Neji smirks widely weakling be grateful that the Hyuga fighting style defeated you he said arrogantly before the bride reigned herself making him gasp impossible no one survives the Hyuga's invincible style he said in a whispered terrified tone as the bride tackles him and pummels him to unconsciousness. Shikimaru sees this with a terrified expression so are we going to fight or not? Asked Shaltier. Shikimaru gulps knowing this his end before a forest appears between him and Shaltir, Shikimaru follows its direction seeing an injured Jonan. Commander Nara he coughs blood escape and let the Hokage know of this Shikimaru nods as he escapes leaving his dead comrades behind to ensure their sacrifices weren't for nothing. Meliscula sees this and was about to send one of her undead at him let him leave, this will give us the attention we need Shaltir ordered. After a while the chaos was done with all the Konoha shinobi dead with the exception of Neji who was captured to be used in chakra experiments for his bloodline. Shaltir stands on the podium as the revived wave people reunite with their loved ones and sing praises to her and her squad people of wave she said gaining their attention I saved you by orders from my master Lord Ains who will now be the daimyo of this country when he arrives make sure to make this place look good. Long live Ains shouted a man and soon others joined him as Shaltier smirks this world will be a walk in the park. Good first let's begin with redesigning the bridge to its original form Shaltier shouted getting the people to cheer further to her and her beloved master. Gara started trembling and opens his eyes slowly adjusting to the dim light, he grunts a little as he tries to get up don't overdo yourself take it easy someone ordered. Curious Gara follows the direction of the voice and finds the overlord it's great news to me you're well and congratulations to becoming K's cage after being hated by the very same people that you're in charge of now. Gara is baffled seeing this stranger he never met before, yet he spoke to him in a natural tone yes, thanks and who are you exactly? Ains laughs is that a way to speak to an old friend? Gara is even more taken back at this stranger's tone not to mention his suspicious appearance before he could speak the stranger stops him raising his hand well speak more of this soon now we have company. Gara followed the gaze of the overlord and sees the rescue squad consisting of his sister, Chio, Matsuri along with her team and of course team 7 from Konoha. The rescue squad looks at the shape of the cave baffled seeing no one aside from the sorcerer king and Gara. The silence is enveloping the atmosphere seeing the black burned walls and smelling the blood mixed with fire you did this. Chio broke the silence asking. She was told about this man Ains and his powers from saving Konkuro easily to finding Gara quickly and finally opening a black door seeing that door brought him here a lot faster than they took to come. Ains laughs getting up yes, you took your sweet time arriving I finished the whole thing myself. Sasuke grits his teeth in anger looking at the overlord where's the Akatsuki members. Can't you tell? I killed them with a powerful spell I ended up burning their bodies to Ashane's answered mockingly, 
Then he fakes a disappointed sigh which was believable due to his acting which improved greatly in the course of his conquest too bad I can't cash in using their corpses delivering them to bounty collectors. Sasuke continues looking towards the overlord with rage since this was his opportunity to face the Akatsuki to get one step closer to his brother and goal, yet here as this stranger took the opportunity from him um excuse me Matsuri spoke how did you get here so fast? We weren't completely slow since our Konoha allies allowed us to use their hawk summons which were empowered using the seals. Ain's eyes flash behind his mask making note of what he heard since according to information from his intruders that Konoha have abused both the Kyubi's power and Uzumaki seals for their conquest using a magical portal he answered simply before allowing his thoughts to linger longer. You mean that black thing you made? Kakashi asks in a serious tone. Ains nods and gets up opening up another portal let's return to Suna now in order to calm its people, it'll allow all of you in since you're so slow the Suna shinobi nod their heads while the Konoha shinobi are enraged further of this man mocking their technology which they stole from the Uzumaki clan corpses. Suna K's cage office. Gara sat on his office wearing his robes along with hat arguing with the Konoha shinobi I am sorry but according to law you don't get paid for your troubles since it was Ain's san over here who not only saved my brother but me as well. Kakashi sighs knowing the law and then decides to leave but before they did his star pupil decided to try to get one over the overlord hey where's that chick that was with you? Did she die? The Uchiha asked mockingly hoping to find something wrong on this man who this entire time was humiliating him. Ains laughs please not even Itachi can stand up to her, she can easily make him her bitch and hell like it he fired back making Sasuke more enraged but was held off by his teacher as they left. Gara sighs in annoyance and relief as the Konoha shinobi left so sorry about that Ains san but these Konoha dastards keep throwing their weight around like they own everything. If so, then why are allies with them? Ains asked. It's not like we want to we have to. Since one we need allies to trade with and two staying in their good graces means they won't invade us Tamari answered bothered things haven't been the same ever since Naruto Uzumaki died she said the last bit saddened. Ains decides this the moment of the truth Naruto is alive and well he never died that day. Gara and Tamari look at the overlord like he grew another head what are you talking about? Naruto is dead we saw his corpse Tamari said angered as she shouted. I am Naruto Ains said taking off his mask gloves and unbuttons his robe revealing his skeletal figure. Naruto you're a reanimated corpse. Gara asked showing signs of being terrified as he wants to believe his friend is alive, but the shinobi world isn't so kind to grant such wishes. Are you really Naruto? Tamari asked terrified as well, she swallows a lump in her throat prove it. Ains nodded and coughed before speaking after our battle in Konohagara. I told you never in my life I thought I'll ever meet someone who not only shares my pain but has it worse. Gara's serious expression drops as tears envelop his eyes and cascade down his face. He gets up from his chair rushing towards the overlord embracing him in a warm tight hug, Ains takes a moment to adjust to such emotions of warmness before returning the hug welcome back Naruto Gara managed to say between sobs whilst Tamari looks on wiping tears off her own face at the reunion between her youngest brother and first not to mention only friend. I am glad to be back here Ains said. After a while the parties started catching up with Ains telling them about his adventures of becoming as powerful as he is while Gara and Tamari update him on what happened after his death mainly how Konoha turned into dastards using the technology of the Uzumaki clan along with the Kyubi chakra to invade and capture lands. They captured small villages like Waterfall and stolen their tree in order to empower themselves thankfully the Seven Tails Jinkrukifu escaped and is currently on the run from them. The other daimyos including Kazuhana. Toki and Haruna tried to negotiate with the fire daimyo whom is now a puppet being accompanied by an Anbu agent who does the talking for him making the daimyo more pathetic than Naruto remembers this made many in all remaining villages to start a secret alliance against them Gara said our village is part of it but the fight ahead will be tough if not futile especially since Konoha captured wave stopping trade there. Ains was about to tell his old friends about his plans to fight but receives a call. He looks towards the sand siblings with an embarrassed expression um excuse me one of my followers is calling the two nod letting Ains push his ear yes. Lord Ains I have captured wave and it's now yours Shaltier said from the other side. Good work Shaltier, make sure everything is in order before my arrival Ains praised and instructed. Of course, your wish is my command my beloved Lord Shaltier said from the other side. 
Ains nods as he cuts off the call. He then looks towards his friend's not to worry wave as mine now he announced making his companions gain questionable gazes expecting an answer to what this means. Seeing this Ains answered one of my floor guardians Shelter captured the country making me its rightful ruler and ill join your alliance meaning you don't have to rely on Konoha any further the siblings let out a breath of fresh air as they continued with their conversation. Konoha Hokage Office The fifth Hokage Tsunade sat on her office sighing madly looking at Shikimaru repeat that again. I said we were attacked by mysterious individuals Shikimaru said swallowing his saliva in fear they revived the dead. They made our forces eyes burst to flames, they cut through our forces like butter, one of them sucked Lee's blood dry, one of them turned tent into stone and crushed her to pieces finally their leader looked intimidating without even fighting he breathed heavily remembering what he saw I am certain they kept me alive to deliver this message since they would have easily caught up to me. Tsunade looks at Shikimaru with anger hoping the sloth is lying but unfortunately the Naris don't lie about these kind of things. Before she could press further the doors are knocked sighing Tsunade asked who's there. Team 7 reporting Kakashi said from the other side of the door. Come in the Hokage ordered as Team 7 entered looking tired and bothered seeing this Tsunade asks did something bad happen in the mission. Kakashi sighs the whole mission was bad from start to finish he said honestly. Tsunade's expression darkens explain, first this man Ains showed up he cured Konkuro before Sakura could then he reached the Akatsuki's hideout before us not only that but her defeated them leaving nothing of them. Tsunade slams her desk as she glares at the closet perverted John and how did this man do all of this? Especially when we have our tech and seals. Magic, before you argue this what he called it not to mention he along with his companion a heavy armored woman didn't have chakra Kakashi says shocking the Hokage. Impossible chakra is the energy of life no creature from plant to animal lacks it Tsunade says fearful even Lee has a little chakra she looks towards her secretary Shizun called Jiraiya now. I am here yelled a voice as the toad sage entered through the window I already looked around checking this Ains fella. What did you get? The Hokage asks agitated looking for information about this potential enemy. Jiraiya sighs deeply as he admits just one thing which is he's the new daimyo of wave he says before continuing when Shikimaru escaped I heard the people of wave singing praises to him and prepare a large welcome for him as the new daimyo. That's it, Shikimaru asked gulping still remembering the individuals that attacked them, since they're this monstrous then this man is even more so being able to command such power and respect from them. The pervert sighs nothing else the toads even said this the first time they hear of him. Tsunade sighs taking a deep breath summon the council in order to prepare for this potential threat. Yes ma'am Shizun says leaving in order to summon the council. Team 7 you're free to go except for Kakashi and Shikimaru you're coming to Tsunade orders as Kakashi sighs along with Shikimaru. Konoha council champers. The council was summoned as they took their seats on the table on the right side are the shinobis including clan heads and other important shinobis. On the left side are the civilians whom are in charge of marketing and building. Soon the Hokage entered and took her seat on the head of the table, she coughs gaining attention thank you all for attending on short notice, I have summoned you all today for an important meeting regarding a raising threat. When those words were spoken most of the attendants gasped in shock since they believe in Konoha's propaganda mostly the civilians, while others gain a serious expression being more evident in the three elders especially the Warhawk Danzo and finally there's the arrogant people like Hiyashi Hayuga what kind of threat? Danzo asks. Tsunade sighs our invasion of wave was a complete failure. Everyone gasped what? Impossible they don't possess the same power we do yelled Homura. If only we sent Sasuke they would have been grateful to us since he's the hero that saved them yelled a civilian. Tsunade coughed and hit the table silencing the shouts also the case cage Gara was saved not by us but a mysterious individual named Ains this same person was also the one behind our failed invasion. Who is he? Bring him here to answer to his crimes. Again, Tsunade hit the table silencing the dysfunctional council of idiots Shikimaru show everyone what happened the sloth nods as he approaches Inoichi whom activates his jutsu showing everyone in the room the sloth's memories. Everyone is at the edge of their seats seeing the dead being revived by Meliskula whom is able to make soldiers eyes burst to flames not to mention the seal of the wood release the most powerful bloodline didn't even scratch her. Jintoki and Beta cutting through everyone like butter, brandish minimizing the weapons and jutsus while enlarging small scars killing their forces. 
Tenton turning to stone by Galland who destroys her to pieces making her sensei who acts as a guard grit his teeth in anger even more so seeing his other students killed by the brides, Neji is captured but they don't know that. Hiyashi on the other hand has rage written on his face seeing his family's perfect fighting style not affecting the bride as he makes a reminder to put a bounty on them, so they don't shame his family more. This outrageous. Where did these monsters come from? Tsunade again hits the table silencing the council I have summoned you here to discuss the next course of action not to overreact to anything you see, do you understand? The council became silent. Danzo coughs gaining attention so what is our next course of action? He asks hoping that the Hokage isn't going to make a dumb decision. Tsunade takes a deep breath while Jiraiya will start investigating this Induvial. While we continue looking for new territories she said before continuing and seeing these monsters it's better to take advantage of Whirlpool and build a new base there to launch a navy attack. Danzo hates to admit this but this an incredible idea very well meanwhile my forces will continue their investigation regarding the secret alliance and the seven-tail Jinkrukus location, and he looks towards Hiyashi the former Hyuga heiress Hiyashi grits his teeth in rage of the jab Danzo took at him. He'll go speak to the daimyo to give us his fleet Kaharu offered. Tsunade nodded as she finished the meeting with everyone leaving with the exception of Hisahi Hayuga Lady Hokage a moment of your time please he demanded more than asked making Tsunade sigh in anger knowing what he's after. For the last time Hiyashi we don't know where Hinata as Tsunade stated knowing that one year after Naruto's execution Hinata fell into depression making the Hayuga clan glee over the fact they finally broke down the weakling whom tried to destroy their traditions and were more than ready to give her the caged bird seal. However Hinata had other plans as she disappeared labeling her as a missing nin whom became notorious, in Konoha's eyes, for always standing in the way of Konoha's propaganda first robbing her sister from the Tenseigen a higher form of the Byakugan which was discovered in the Uzumaki clan scrolls. Where the Hyugas immediately hunted down the cult who guarded the secret for the future Byakugan princess, but Konoha took them down using their new technology annihilating the cult and were about to give the power to Hanabi only for Hinata to appear and steal the power for herself. Ever since then Hinata became a constant thorn in Konoha's way saving the seven-tailed Jinkruki along with starting a secret organization that kept promoting anti-Konoha propaganda. Of course, such acts were abhorred by the Hyuga clan who kept increasing the bounty on the once failure wanting her delivered to justice. Hiyashi grits his teeth in rage my clan's honor is being destroyed by every step and breath that failure takes and you just sit around doing nothing he shouted making the Hokage enraged as she chokes him making struggle for air. Tsunade just stares deeply unto his pearl eyes don't you ever treat the Hokage like this, you hear. Because of you do ill not be hesitant to overtax your noble clan, got that. Hiyashi grits his teeth nodding accepting the answer as the Hokage lets go of him. The boar hat. The seven deadly sins were having it easy capturing one Konoha spy after another by using their delicious meads which caught the ears of many including the spies. Meliodas serves drinks and gets the customers drunk, Ban gets non-drinkers through his cooking and Hawk the bar's mascot is being harassed by girls who find him cute. Merlin, Elizabeth, Diane and Elaine are being surrounded by love-struck drunks whom they are more than capable to fend off whilst Gather the goat sin of lust whom is hiding in a secret location launches his magic at coming customers getting any sort of information on them and Escanor helps out by carrying said customers making it look like they drank too much. Meliodas the leader of the group sits behind the bench writing the report of their findings to his fellow Nazarek army about the identities of Jiraiya's top spies to Demigir the promoter of Keho here and the floor guardian of the seventh floor of Nazarek. Meliodas breathes in a huge sigh of relief which is noticed by Elizabeth someone seems happy, huh Meliodas? Meliodas chuckles yeah, this job is easy compared to the worlds we conquered before or when we were Ain's enemies. Elizabeth chuckles who would have thought that the great adventurer Momon was in fact Ames. When Naruto reincarnated in his first world the land of Britannia was an isolated land not doing trade with anyone. Soon the holy knights of the strongest kingdom Lioness had turned against their king whilst his youngest daughter Princess Elizabeth went looking for the legendary order of knights called the Seven Deadly Sins during her quest she came across Momon his partner Knave and their pet Hamasuk from there they met Meliodas and found the rest of the sins defeating the Holy Knights, the revived Ten Commandments and finally the demon king whom Ains was originally sent to fight. After that using his newfound knowledge Ains made Britannia do trade with his kingdom and freed Meliodas and Elizabeth from their curses under the condition they serve him, 
It was a tough decision for the lovers but they eventually agreed seeing no other way to destroy their curse and ever since then they became part of Nazarick's forces along with their friends. Before they can reflect more on their past the door of the bar is slammed open revealing a total of six figures wearing black capes and hoods making the sins on guard as they move around carefully not letting their guard down and finally sit down on a table where it's easy to jump and get away. Elizabeth approaches the strangers with a clip and pen as she puts on her best smile hello and welcome to the boar hat what can I get you? The strangers don't speak as they simply get pens marking on their menus as they hand it over to Elizabeth whom nods and leaves, was it a great idea coming here? Said one of the figures being a girl to her comrades I mean sure we found Konoha spies coming here, but aren't we giving ourselves away? The leader being another girl glares what's life without a risk? This a great opportunity many Konoha spies are here, it'll be a waste to let them all go. Another one of the figures being an old man yawns I just wish to relax and drink some mead. The tallest figure sighs trust me I have the same feeling, but as long as Konoha stands up with their propaganda we can't rest. He speaks true I remember it as it were yesterday, when they destroyed my village and killed its most loyal shinobis spoke another figure being a girl. The finale figure was about to say something before Elizabeth came with the orders and some mead. This made the leader suspicious as she glares at the waitress behind her hood we didn't order mead. The waitress giggles don't worry well not charge you it's a gift from the bar. The group simply keep their cool and thank the waitress as they begin eating on their meals which tasted nice due to Ban's cooking skills. They keep looking around finding some of the spies sleeping carried away by Escanor and one of them was about to go to the restroom promoting the leader to order the largest one of them to gesture to him to follow him. The large man does as his leader tells him as he goes to the restroom following behind the spy with the intention to knock him out only for Gowther to launch his magic at them both putting them under his control. The figures remain in their place until they notice the bar staff force civilians out getting them suspicious especially when they surround them. Meliodas approaches the group with his sword lost vein strapped to his back now I suggest you guys come with us peacefully. The figures jump up attempting to escape only for King to use his spirit spear chastifal turning it into a giant bear with six arms crushing the bar's roof whilst forcing the figures down tearing off their ropes revealing them as Yudakata, Roshi, Fu, Hotaru and Hinata Hayuga. The sins split each taking an opponent with Meliodas standing against Hinata, Ban against Yudakata, Diane in her giant form wielding her hammer against Roshi, Merlin against Fu, King against Hotaru. Hanada activates her eyes attempting to use her sidekick powers on the bar owner who shrugs them off as he charges at the former Hyuga heiress drawing his sword attempting to slash her with it only for her to barely dodge it through flight making Meliodas grin as he generates dark wings following after the leader whom sends a fireball towards him. Meliodas slashes the ball in half as Hanada disappeared into thin air during that time and appears above him driving Akuni into the back of his head which bleeds making her grin a little before the demon disappears into nothingness. You did well against my clone Meliodas said from above supporting his large grin you're really interesting and I would like to drag this battle longer but my lord wouldn't like that he said honestly before knocking the girl out. Ban swings his nunchaku as Yudakata activates his seal getting two tail out as he slashes Ban's hands. If you don't wish to lose more limbs I suggest for you to surrender the six tail Jinkruki offered only for his eyes to widen seeing Ban's hands grow back out of white smoke as the greedy fox charges at the Jinkruki with the nunchaku again swinging it around as Yudakata dodges whilst firing water jutsus towards his opponent whom parries them off using his weapon as he gets closer and slams down crushing the floor missing the six tail Jinkruki by a small margin. I suggest for you to surrender unless you want me to crush you ban offered not that it'll matter since our lord can reanimate you, Yudakata gets all tails out turning into his tailed beast seeing this man being powerful and capable of regenerating not to mention needing to protect his student he decided to go all out. Ban simply smirks as he charges forwards whilst Yudakata launches poison needles towards the fox sin who just shrugs them off as he's immortal he jumps up and shouts martial arts ability increase, greater ability increase. Power strike as he said these words his body and weapon shined from yellow to stronger yellow to a violent crimson hitting the giant slug with the weapon knocking him out cold whilst turning him back to normal. Roshi launches a fire jutsu of meteors towards the giantess hitting her head on making the old man smirk before the smoke clears revealing Diane with steel skin as she strikes the hammer down promoting Roshi to dodge. The old man breathes heavily thinking he was finished just now. 
Suddenly the earth he's on raises up towards the hand of the giantess who attempts to crush him in her hand promoting the aged Jinkruki to follow the younger Jinkruki by activating the seal turning into his tail beast crushing the raising pillar as he stands tall face to face with the serpent sin. Roshi in his biju form lets out a battle cry as he launches a biju bomb not daring to take a risk as the giantess raises another pillar of stone being wider than the last. Roshi smirks you're a fool if you think you can stop the most powerful tail beast attack with a wall as he prepares to celebrate his victory the bomb hits the wall which doesn't blow up or is it penetrated rather the bomb digs into it like if it were made out of rubber. Roshi looks confused and scared at this as the wall reflects the bomb hitting him square on knocking him out and turn him back to normal. Fu seeing how her comrade were annihilated attempts to escape in order to save their plans even if it were going to leave a bad taste in her mouth reminding her about her village's fall, nonetheless Fu understands the situation at hand as she attempts to escape only for a black tornado to surround her dragging her down inside a bottle which shrinks her. Terrified Fu looks around before a light chuckle is heard from Merlin who appears as a giant to Fu due to her small size now I can't afford to anger my master. Trust me I tried it once when I attempted to steal his secrets but I didn't get away with it as he imprisoned me inside an ice dungeon for what felt like eternity Merlin simply stated whilst shuddering at the memory of how enhanced drugs made her imprisonment fell like a hell long of time. Hotaru grits her teeth seeing all her comrades taken down easily as she stands no chance whilst Kingu turned his weapon back to its regular form points at her throat as she raises her hand surrendering. After that Gowther was summoned to put the group under his spell along with their fallen member Han the five-tailed Jinkruki. Nazarick Fifth Floor, Glacier The fifth floor of Nazarick is a glacier-themed floor with ice covering each and every corner making it look like an icy mountain right straight out of a fairy tale. Within this mountain there's the frozen prison a hellish cell that looks like a two-story house straight from a fairy tale from the outside which currently houses the group of missing Nin. Hanada was the first to wake up followed by the rest of her comrades as they hold their heads in pain, the last thing they remember was the one-sided beat down from those bartenders oh you're finally awake said the dislocated voice of a woman whom appears as a giant green slime with lots of makeup. Who are you? Where are we? Han shouts as he grabs the cell bars in anger, but immediately regrets the decision as the slimy woman catches his cheeks in a flirty manner. If such a handsome looking man is asking me of my name it's only sensible, I give it the slimy woman said as her circular tongue presses against the Iwa Nin's lips terrifying him even more I am Neuronist Painkill the special intelligence investigator in charge of torturing prisoners, my dear. Roshi right now didn't know what to feel as a swirl of emotions envelops his mind, he feels disgusted at this creature's appearance and would like to laugh at his fellow Iwa Jinkruki luck of attracting her yet at the same time he's imprisoned in a hellish cold cell being held by this monster in front of them. He puts his hands on his belly attempting to unleash the biju chakra, but he doesn't feel anything scared Roshi takes up his shirt and his eyes almost fall out of their sockets seeing that his seal is gone. It wasn't locked or it was weakened, it was gone he looks up attempting to announce that to his fellow Jinkrukus only to find them in a similar position what the hell is happening. Our seals they aren't there Roshi thought terrified at any other time Roshi and his fellows would gush at the idea of being freed from these curses yet how are they freed without dying. Neuronist got on this as she chuckles don't worry about your curses she assured before continuing your beasts there under his lordship protection above this floor. Yutakata gets up terrified as words keep dying on his throat before speaking how did you remove the tailed beasts without killing us? He struggled asking this question. After all the only way a Jinkruki to be free of their burden is to die either of old age or sickness and the beast is transferred to the next holder or if the beast is forcibly ribbed out from them. Neuronist chuckles once more please nothing is impossible to his lordship he's a miracle himself. Before Yutakata could ask more Fu got up and asked, wait you said the tail beasts are above us. Neuronist nods yes my dear this the great tomb of Nazarick an invincible structure built by the hands of the 41 supreme beings acting as their base and home she answered before continuing we're on the fifth floor the glacier. Hotaru got up eyes widening as she breathes heavily are you saying all this ice is inside a base? Neuronist smiles yes, our supreme creators are the greatest artists in existence making such great scenery down below the ground, ah there's so much more and I would like to see you appreciate the work of art made by our supreme creators but unfortunately I can't let go of you yet as his lordship is coming to see you. Hanada glares deciding to ask, who's your lordship? 
Before Neuronist could answer a black portal appears behind as she goes down on her knees kneeling welcome back to Nazareth your lordship. Ains stepped out of the portal scaring the group seeing a skeleton walking around without any flesh covering it. Ains raises his hand thank you for looking after these prisoners Neuronist, I would like to speak to their leader alone. Neuronist gets up nodding as the ice moblins open the cell door allowing their master and as he approaches Hinata whom tries to get away but something stops her don't bother running before you were put inside this cell, a magic spell was casted on you to not allow you escape Neuronist stated. Ains stands above the former Hyuga heiress whom closes her eyes in fear please don't, I still have something to do she shouted hoping their captor would listen to her. She feels his cold bony hand touching her forehead making her gasp then looks up seeing he doesn't mean harm which confuses her what are you Hinata tried to ask only for Ains to cast a spell making her gasp seeing through memories. Not just any memories but ones of someone that was precious to her and she thought he was gone. Ains removes his hand whilst the group looks towards their leader with worry not daring saying anything as they can't comprehend what they saw, in their view this skeleton just touched Hinata's forehead then the girl gasped as tears run down her face, she looks up with a hopeful gaze Naruto-kun. Yes, Hanada-chan I am sorry it took me this long to come back Ains stated. Hanada's tears increased as she jumps hugging the overlord crying loudly I don't care you're finally back she continues sobbing as tears fall on the undead king who feels something that he missed all this time, something that no matter what his minions tried to do just couldn't give him. It was the feeling of warmth Ains slowly raised his hands up returning the embrace, soon they were done as Ains removes the spell on them. The undead king stands in front of the group sorry about the terrible hospitality allow me to welcome you all he coughs before raising his hands up welcome to the great tomb of Nazareth I am the great master of this dungeon where all manner of creatures from undead, demons, angels, mortals, demi-humans and heteromorphs call home, I am Ain Zulgaon the conqueror, the undead king, the sorcerer king and the master of all. He then activates the ring of Ains Ulgaon let's give you all a proper welcome he said before the red light surrounded the group teleporting them. Nazarek 9th floor, royal suite. The red light appears as the grand master and the group of missing nin appear inside this floor. Unlike the other floors in Nazarek the floor wasn't a dungeon but rather a suite that has hot springs, bar, salons and other stuff the inhabitants use for their everyday needs. Make yourselves at home the overlord stated before grabbing Hinata using the ring to teleport somewhere else before the group could object the homunculus maids came and kneeled before them. Welcome to Nazareth your wishes are our commands they said at the same time in perfect sync. Roshi shrugs off well this beats prison he said, do you have a bar? Sixus nods gesturing for the aged nin to follow her as Han soon follows after, whilst Fu and Hotaru decide to check out the salons and Yudakata goes to the hot springs. Somewhere in the wilderness, Jiraiya is already having a hard time and curses his luck seeing that none of his spies are available, already giving his current target loopholes to work with. Where in the hell is everybody? The super pervert asks himself, then a piece of paper falls on his face making him mad, he takes the paper out of his face attempting to tear it off out of anger, but something about it stops him. It was a flyer about a new sport called Keho a female exclusive sport where combatants wear all kinds of swimsuits and try to push the other off using their breasts and ass. Jiraiya has a huge perverted grin on his face as small traces of blood makes out of his nose, this like one of his wildest dreams came true that he pinched himself to ensure it wasn't fake and it was successful not to mention it'll be held about now and the location isn't far. Well I can't contact anyone so I'll give myself a break after waiting so long Jiraiya excused himself as he shoves the flyer inside his coat as he rushes towards the location. What Jiraiya didn't know is that someone was watching him being Teba a Rito warrior he presses on his ear Lord Demigir the perverted fish caught the bite. The demon chuckles it was a lot easier than I thought, it seems this mons lust can overpower his logic easily he stated good job Teba you can return to your current duties now, I'll call you when I need your assistant. Yes Teba replied kneeling before cutting off the call and flying off. Stadium. Inside a rural village the first ever Keho event will take place as many people mostly perverted men bought tickets as if they were children in a candy store. They took their seats as they kept watching the bouts with cheers. The first fight was between longtime friends and rivals Nozomi Kamenashi and Sayaka Miyata, which ended in a draw. The second fight was between Sanei Howen and Kazane Aoba, 
Sine possessed great power and speed whilst Kazain possessed incredible thinking and copycat abilities which prevailed in the end. The last battle was a battle royal between many players which was won by Maya Sakashiro. Alright this all thank you everyone for joining announced the staff member. Everyone left being satisfied with this as there's no way this sport won't be a hit. However, one super pervert decided to take liberties and see the combatants changing, he snuck around carefully as if he's infiltrating an enemy stronghold as gets inside the locker room, he finds no one which confuses him. You took your sweet time entering this locker room Mr. Spy announced a voice filled with praise, Jiraiya looks behind him seeing Demigir the floor guardian of the seventh floor and the commander of defenses. Jiraiya shakes his head what makes you think I am a spy? The demon smiles I believe there's not a single soul in the elemental nations that doesn't know the spy master of the tyrannical village of Konoha he moves his hands in making a circle as all entrances from doors, windows and even air holes close making the pervert terrified looking towards the floor guardian whom smiles now that I got you, I won't let you get away. Jiraiya throws a smoke bomb at the ground as he backs off attempting to use the reverse summon which doesn't work making the Sonin eyes widen even more so when the guardian appears next to him making him jump away in fear the magic spell I used forbids the use of any escape routes including the summons he states before staring into the Sonin's eyes I heard stories about your teamwork with the toads now let's see if you can work without them, dead last. Jiraiya grits his teeth I am more than capable to take care of myself he states activating the Nara shadow binding technique through a seal trapping the demon's shadow. Demigir just cracks his neck breaking the bind easily making the Sonin surprised as he then activates the swamp of the underworld which ticks Demigir off seeing this man is ruining the suit that his creator designed for him. Taking advantage of the distraction Jiraiya jumps up and releases oil towards the demon before setting it on fire using a fireball technique. Jiraiya lands successfully having a look of victory on his face which disappeared immediately as Demigir wasn't affected at all how. I have complete resistance to any and all fire attacks, it was the way my beloved creator made me to suit my tasks Demigir stated loving the terrified look on the Sonin's face now it's my turn, aspect of the devil in large arm he yelled as his right arm became massive with a black color despite its size Demigir wasn't weighted down as he disappeared in a blur hitting Jiraiya with it making the Sonin skid across the floor whilst bleeding and losing some teeth. Demigir then reveals his wings as he flies up aspect of the devil tentacle wings he speaks launching thousands of dark needles at the Sonin whom covers himself with his hair using it a shield parrying away the needles by using hair needles eventually Jiraiya runs out of stamina as he switches himself with a nearby locker escaping the needles from hell. Jiraiya breathes heavily what is this monster? I never seen ninjutsu like this before the old pervert thought to himself as he launches a huge water cannon ninjutsu towards the demon whom smirks as he opens his inventory similar to how his lord does and gets a dagger out. You have been fun, even though I would like to play with you more you're dangerous and I must catch you, full counter he yells swinging the dagger horizontally in the direction of the water cannon which stops momentarily before being launched back at Jiraiya twice the speed and power taking the old man down as he kneels. Demigir stands above him as he orders kneel down the Sonin does as he says without much fight as a strong pressure is pressing on him forcing him to kneel. Demigir smiles seeing the confusion on the Sonin's face this a special skill of mine called command mantra no matter how much you struggle you'll do as I say for I posse's a higher level than you the demon explained as he opens a black portal then turns towards the kneeling Sonin go through the portal he orders using his mantra forcing the old man in. Nazarek Throne Room Jiraiya finds himself inside the purple lit throne room where Ains Ulgaon is sitting down on the throne of kings a world item which enhances the level of the one sitting on it even if they're already maxed leveled. Soon Demigir follows and the portal closes then turns to Jiraiya Neil the Sonin is once again forced by the command mantra to kneel down as Demigir follows through. I captured the spymaster as per requested Lord Ains. This guy is Ains. Jiraiya thought to himself seeing he fallen into a trap. Good job Demigir, now to the rest Ains commanded as the demon god and used the command mantra to have Jiraiya confess everything from the location of the Kyubi, Konoha's loopholes, secret entrance ways, plans and pretty much everything. Jiraiya looks down in shame seeing how easily he confessed all of this top tire information and now Konoha is more screwed than before as this new threat has gained everything no, I really fucked up he thought to himself trembling from fear and shame as the Pleiades take away all of his seals and contract. Ains gets up from hid throne approaching this man know this trash that abandoned his responsibilities to him now Jiraiya before I get rid of you, 
I want to know why did you abandon me? What? Ains slams the staff next to the pervert making him tremble further don't play dumb with me, you were my godfather you were supposed to look after me, but no you chose to betray me. Jiraiya looks at the overlord with fear Naruto. I was called that once it's quite a shame that my name came from you a man who betrayed my father Ains stated. Jiraiya scowls he's not your father, Minato is a great shinobi whom life ended because of you. I see so you blame for my father's death even though it wasn't really my fault Ains deduced. Kashina is to blame to that bitch carried you and gave birth to you to kill Minato Jiraiya stated angering Ains who swung the staff cutting off the Sanin's left arm making him scream in pain. How dare you, how dare you speak like this about my mother in front of me. Ains shouted as the throne room trembled from the overlord's anger as a powerful furious purple aura envelops him not only that but you speak like you did everything for my father and furthermore you dare ruin this place me and my friends made with your disgusting tongue. Ains scream loudly in anger until the repressed emotion skill of the undead kicks in calming him down, the overlord breathes in relief sorry about my temper he apologized to the present forces whom just nod. Ains returns to his throne it doesn't matter what you think of me super pervert, you outlived your usefulness, so it'll get rid of you. Jiraiya looks scared from the display of anger and the statement his former godson gave him now Naruto please don't do this he begged think about Minato and the third they wouldn't want this. Ains hits the staff stopping the pervert from talking my father already gave me his blessings to hate everything about him including that village and I am more than certain that the third is turning in his grave seeing the village become a tyranny his eyes flash before I kill you ill torture you like you tortured me he laughs lightly and I have the perfect punishment for you super pervert of Asanim, ill banish you to Mamwaro Island. All the men present including Demigir and Sebas gulp down, the aged butler approached his lord my lord are you certain about this? This fool won't survive and would kill himself he advised. Ains nods true however Demigir use your mantra and have him unable to commit suicide. The demon adopts a large sadistic smile with pleasure he states turning to the Sanin and doing just that, then opens up the portal forcing the pervert in it. Mamwaro Island. Jiraiya find himself in this island as he goes around not really seeing anything wrong here then he spots a woman, adopting a perverted grin the Sanin walks over to her hey they're beautiful do you have a map? The woman turns around revealing herself as a man in drag scaring the Sanin hey, girls there's a new man here he yells as other men in drag arrive chasing Jiraiya who wishes to commit suicide but is unable. Nazarick throne room, Ains drinks a bit of liquor to calm himself for his coronation ceremony as the new daimyo of wave and to carry out his plans with the new information he got from Jiraiya whom is now suffering. The people of Wave gathered in front of the gates of the daimyo's palace waiting for the introduction of their new daimyo, the waiting was over as Shaltier Bloodfallen had appeared on the ramp ladies, gentlemen and children of all ages inhibitors of this beautiful piece of land please allow me to introduce to you our new daimyo the great Ains Ulgaon. As Shaltier introduced her master the purple curtains behind her opened revealing the overlord in his usual disguise of simply buttoning his robe, wearing gloves and the mask of envy. Ains walked forwards as Shaltier stepped aside kneeling before her master. The undead king raised his hand stopping the people's cheers thank you. Thank you he coughs as he starts addressing people of wave for three years you were harassed by the forces of Konoha the so-called strongest shinobi village, until recently where they killed my predecessor the former daimyo completely taking control of this beautiful land while turning its people into slaves he began in order to gain their support however thankfully I finally emerged and interfered putting an end to this oppression. So, I ask you now is there any objections to my rulership on this land? No, you're the one true ruler. We prefer being ruled by you than Konoha's bastards shouted a man. Yes, He's right you came and saved us when we were in our last moments a woman shouted. My lord I believe the people here including myself are forever grateful to you and the only way we can pay you back for everything you have done is by making you our daimyo Tazuna spoke so please accept this job. Tazuna is right our hero is none other than you Lord Ains. Long live Lord Ains the people of Wave kept praising in loud voices. The floor guardian stood behind their leader with satisfied smiles I have to say this world seems a lot easier than many of the last ones Shaltier commented to her fellow guardians. Experience was key not to mention their other option where tyrants Kokaitis answered. True it was easy to establish a good home base but we must and take things easy for all this as to our lord Albedo reminded her fellow guardians. We weren't thinking of taking it easy at all, right Mare? 
Aura defended before asking her brother for vouch for her. Yi Yes Mare replied nervously. I am already aware of that and thus captured the spymaster to ensure he won't cause problems as well as going where Shaltir left off Demigir stated getting an angry tick from the vampire. Ains lifted his hands up now are there any questions from the other nobles? The sorcerer king asked turning to the new appointed nobles who were handpicked by Demigir after the death of the former nobles who were killed by Konoha forces, that is of course after eliminating the puppet nobles Konoha put in charge. Lord Ains I am currently concerned with our standing in the elemental nations one noble began given the current circumstances from being invaded by fire country who posses a lot of power, the formation of an anti-fire country alliance and the forces of Orochimaru and the Akatsuki organization. What is our standing in all of this? I am curious as well since our country is very important for trade. Meaning the anti-alliance well capitalize on how we were almost turned into a puppet state and convince us to join them. However despite being tyrants Konoha posses a lot of power meaning if we provoke them our country might be finished another noble spoke. This an interesting question. But rest assured I already decided on our next courses of action Ains reassured the nobles for now well remain neutral and as for allies ill open a series of games here inviting all countries to take part in and well be part of them too, from these competitions well see where our standing is going to be. Tomorrow ill send messengers to all my fellow daimyos of these games. The nobles nodded to one another seeing the benefits of this idea not only will they get a better picture of their surroundings but it'll be a successful advertisement stunt. After the announcements were finished Ains left the stage as he entered his new palace being accompanied by his floor guardians, they reached the throne room as Ains sat upon his new throne while the guardians kneeled before him now what updates do we have to Migir? The sorcerer asked. Thanks to the vigilante group led by Hanada as well as the seven deadly sins and of course you and Lady Albedo we have possession of five of the nine tailed beasts these include the one tail, the four tails, the five tails, the six tails and the seven tails Demigir answered we also have gained two of the ten tails rings that belong to Akatsuki members Deidre and Sasori, lessening the group numbers as they are unable to recruit new members without these rings. Explain Ains demanded out of curiosity. From what my tortures gathered from Jiraiya's captured spies these rings are special and non-replicable since they came or claimed to come from the mentioned ten tails monster as they were unable to recruit a tenth member after Orochimaru stole the tenth one during his defection Demigir explained. I see what about the puppets that belong to Sasori. Demigir smiled they are better than before and will serve us well. Our engineers have turned them into killing war machines capable of mass destruction. Ains nodded Kokaitis used these puppets to amplify security on our country. Yes my lord, and I believe since Jiraiya's elimination we should call back our spies since they'll represent wave during the games and be replaced by others Kokaitis suggested. I was planning on that Ains revealed before turning over to Shaltir Shaltir I have another mission for you. What is it my lord? The vampire asked. I have a target that I want to be eliminated for the time being his name is Orochimaru, he's supposed to meet Sasori in Kusa. Take Soros improved puppet Hiroko to impersonate Sori to see if that meeting can be of use in a way to eliminate Orochimaru's way of immortality but I would like you to refrain from putting an end to him as I plan to take his life myself Ains ordered. Of course, my liege your wish is my command. Ains turned to the Dark Elf Twins Aura and Mare please set up rings as well as other preparations to welcome our audience to the games. Yes, Lord Ains the two answered at the same time. Albedo how's the covered mission of capturing the Nine Tails and taking over Fire Country from the inside going? Ains asked the Floor Guardian leader whom one of her specialties is planning cover missions despite her rather brash nature. Yes. Narbaral Gamma already came in contact with Hanada's spies being your former apprentice Konohamaru or as he calls himself now Maru as well as his two friends, your old teacher Uruka Yumino, Enko Mistrashi, Shizun Kato and the ramen stand owners Albedo revealed the stand owners managed to get a few high-ranking officials drunk after Narbaral caught their eyes as she worked there for her cover. She used the reading mind spell confirming the Kyubi's location along with the security measures that were taken to keep it there. I have already sent Solid Snake to infiltrate the location to get the Kyubi while Hassan I Sabbath group will assassinate the puppet Daimyo along with his Anbu bodyguard whom identities will be impersonated by Doppel Caspondent and Narbaral respectively to keep Konoha on a leash while you plan its demise. Of course, well get the spies to wave during the games. Very well my loyal enforcers let's get ready for the games Ains ordered as he got up laughing lightly. 
Konoha underground location. The Anbus walked around carrying their spears while others were walking on the walls, every corner was guarded heavily due to what lies down there. Soon a bell is heard as the Anbus walk towards a location while activating seals. The dining room is currently full of the Anbu guards taking their seats, in the cafeteria the cook prepares to open a box of bread as he leans down opening it in a flash a hand wraps around him, the chef found himself struggling for air as the arms lock him in a cobra twist until he was knocked out completely. The man gets out of the box revealing himself as solid snake that was a lot easier than I thought, aren't they supposed to be ninjas? Well whatever works he mused to himself as dragged the chef to the back area taking his clothes. Snake now dressed up as the chef continues cooking the meals that varied from salad to beef, that had one thing in common being a purple liquid that was poured to them by Snake alright dinner is served fellas he announced as the Anbu took their plates digging into their delicious meals. Soon they began struggling as they fell flat on their plates, Snake sneakily walks over to one Anbu carrying his hand checking his pulse then let it go, Snake watched as the open palmed hand fallen on the table making Snake smirk as he sneaks his hands into the Anbu's pockets getting what looks like a seal paper. The agent now switched back to his regular gear walks over to the seals undoing them, he kept walking around disabling any security measure he came across to with ease until he finally reached his destination. A giant orange furred fox stood before him he looked in pain as thousands of chains were dug into his flesh, the chains were black with what looked like red stuff going through them snake watched the flow of the red stuff being sucked out of the fox and transferred to pieces of paper well I have to say this one weird ass weapon here. Silent scum come here and dare say that to me the fox growled as he grits his teeth from the pain. Snake looks at the giant fox well I would nag at you for the scum comment but I have got a job here so I am acting professional the agent commented as he brought a blue stone confusing the fox the stone suddenly brightened making the fox eyes widen. What are you doing? The fox demanded, freeing you and taking you to a better place snake answered the fox was about to retort but the light engulfed making him disappear. Snake looked around as he brought out another stone being green, he activated it as it shined. He chuckles this wasn't even difficult he said to himself opening a portal he went through. Fire Daimyo's Palace The Daimyo was currently sleeping inside his quarters while being guarded by his samurais with Konoha ninja roaming around also acting as security. One ninja was walking on the roof as he was suddenly grabbed from behind, he looks behind him seeing a white skull mask, the ninja attempted to cry but his captor wraps his other arm around him snapping his neck as he fell dead. Soon the corpse was discovered by other ninjas and samurais who lean down inspecting it, the head samurai gets turning to his fellows sound the alarm it appears there's a break in as he ordered the corpse behind him suddenly got up as it shakes unnaturally making the other samurais scared. Calm one scared samurai attempted to tell his superior but was interrupted. Spread out, the commander cut him off as he ordered, the corpse then was enveloped by a giant gob scaring the other samurais further. Cap another scared samurai attempted to bring attention to the corpse. I want you all to be calm I know it's been a long ass time since there was a break in but well remain calm and follow the procedure the commander again interrupted while the gob behind him got bigger as it took form turning into a death knight further scaring the samurais. The commander finally notices the scared looks on his followers what's wrong. They simply point behind him as he looked seeing the death knight that simply roared as it cut the commander in half violently. The other samurai turn paler seeing the swift yet brutal death of their leader as they scream and run. The death knight roars again as it chases after them cutting them to pieces, ninjas who just saw that also scream as they look for the alarm only to hear roaring footsteps looking behind them seeing more death knights, the dead samurais were turned to death knights upon their deaths making the ninja even more scared as they finally reached the alarm they pull the liver down only for no sound to be heard. The ninja that pulled the liver looks at the liver confused and scared as the death knights cornered him, seeing no other option the ninja threw shurikens at them only to bounce off, he threw kanai's only to yield the same results he then activated ninjutsu's only to not harm the beings. He was powerless as he screamed while the death knights slashed their blades at him killing him off. The daimyo slept deeply on his bed unaware of the chaos happening in his palace, soon the doors of his quarters is slammed open waking him. He was about to yell at the person that woke him up only to welcomed by a terrifying sight of a samurai being bloody the left half of his head along with most of his left side being cut with blood pouring out from him like a fountain he fell down flat on his face dead and who save me. 
The daimyo ordered his personal anbu to come to his aid only for a corpse of said anbu to fall on him causing him to scream. Pathetic is this really the monarch of this land? Asked a young monk's voice being Lubbock. Tell me about it he's more pathetic than Prime Minister Honest another voice agreed being Bullet. Guys it doesn't matter we're here to do our job scolded a girl's voice being Akame. Come on Akame you can't fault them I mean this guy is pretty pathetic if you ask me Leone spoke in the guy's defense. Soon all of Night Raid's members had appeared surrounding the fire daimyo, the daimyo gives his best menacing gaze at them who are you? And how dare you break into my palace? The group of assassins weren't intimidated as they continued looking at the daimyo as a very little threat which causes the daimyo to grit his teeth in rage how dare you? He'll execute you if you don't leave. Leone smirked as she got a dagger out of her pocket and threw it at the daimyo's feet causing him to jump up out of fear, the lioness approaches the daimyo sitting come on execute me, take the dagger and kill me I believe in you. The daimyo looked terrified at the woman as he continued backing away until he hit something behind him. He looks up seeing Narbaral Gamma making scream loudly from terror as he fell on his hands and feet trying to escape only to be stopped by the battle maid who simply stepped on his robe. He again screams loudly from terror as he starts crying causing a tick on Narbaral's forehead silence dung you're going to make me go deaf from your screams. The daimyo gets on his knees raising his hands up please don't kill me and I'll give you anything. Money, status favors anything you want just please don't kill me he cried as he fallen down sobbing for his life. Narbaral approached him as she sat on her knees making the daimyo to look up having a hopeful expression on his face that has tears cascading down, Narbaral approaches him bringing a sword out before the daimyo could scream Narbaral in a flash cut him in half pathetic fool if you break down and cry easily then what possibly can you offer me that my lord didn't already give me? Narbaral asked before looking over to her shoulder Kaspondin have you remembered the dung's appearance? Kaspondin chuckles of course don't underestimate me Narbaral he answered as he turned into the daimyo he coughed so please don't kill me he said in the daimyo's voice as he laughed that was a good impression, right? I do admit it was good thankfully I'll just play as the anbu instead of this pathetic dung Narbaral answered as she thanked her creator, that he made her more magic focused despite being a doppelganger. Very well Kaspondin said let's clean this up before morning arrives. Morning. Kaharu along with her escort had arrived at the palace's meeting room where they waited for the daimyo to arrive. The daimyo came being accompanied by the Anbu guard Konoha placed as he took his seat in front of Kaharu, the elder Kunoichi bowed before the daimyo good day lord daimyo may your reign be long and prosperous. The daimyo raised his hand thank you Kaharu san now I would like to know the reason for this visit. The elder composed herself yes, it was rather sudden but we came to you for assistance. Kaspondent acted worried and confused what kind of assistance. I already give most of the country's finances to the village he asked as his acting is spot on. Yes, and we are thankful for that but unfortunately we ran into problems during our failed invasion of Wave Kaharu revealed. My goodness how did this happen? Kaspondent asked terrified. We are not fully aware of the details but it seems a raising threat had just made itself known Kaharu answered this threat's name is Ain Zulgaon and we must eliminate him immediately so we would like to use the fleet of Fire Country to launch another attack on Wave and also build a new base on the remains of Whirlpool. Before Kaspondin could respond to that a ninja came landed in front of him Lord Daimyo forgive me but there's an urgency that needs your attention. What is it? Messengers from Wave came demanding an audience with you bringing word from the new Wave Daimyo the ninja answered. Kaspondin knew that the plan of his lord is already in motion and this his K, he looks over to Kaharu Kaharu San please forgive this urgency. Of course, Kaharu said while questioning in her mind Ains has sent messengers here already. What is he planning? Soon the doors opened as the envoy from Wave entered, they stood in front of Kaspondin before kneeling thank you for accepting us this quickly. Yes, after all it is from a fellow daimyo. Now what does the daimyo of Wave wish to share with me? The daimyo of Wave Ain Sama is angered by the invasion attempt by your end however he's willing to overlook this for the time being the leader of the envoy spoke for he wishes to invite Fire Country to compete in a series of games he'll be hosting. Kaharu who was still there narrows her closed eyes at the envoy and the outlandish decision of the new daimyo whom is currently their raising threat, she turns over to the anbu giving her hidden signals. The Anbu nods as she whispers into the daimyo's ear for what purpose does he hold these games? Kaspondent asked. 
to celebrate his coronation and to let his neighbors know he has no bad intentions to anyone the envoy leader answered. The daimyo smiled goofily as he closed his eyes I accept his invitation. Kaharu was about to argue but the Anbu raised her hand giving a hand signal which translated into this approved by Jiraiya-sama to get closer to the threat. One of the spies contacted me and delivered this message. Kaharu gave a silent nod as she watched the proceedings between the daimyo and envoy as they left well see you in about a week daimyo-sama. Yes, I can't wait. Kaharu who remained silent up until now coughed bringing back attention to herself by coughing yes, Kaharu-san you were saying. Nothing for now I ask you to allow Konoha to represent Fire Country in the games the elder simply asked. Of course, after all Konoha is the most powerful ninja village of all Kaspondon said while feeling sick about praising nations that weren't under his lord it was needed but he feels like washing his mouth after the old woman leaves. That's all I'll now tell the Hokage about this Kaharu said as she got up, she bowed before the daimyo one last time thank you for your time. Soon she and her escort left as they brought out a kanai that shined as they disappeared. Kaspondon coughs as he gets up I am going to the bathroom to clean myself acting like this pathetic human made me sick with myself. In Konoha Hokage office, Kaharu arrived via the teleporting tech they developed using the fourth Hokage's notes back to the village, she sat in front of the Hokage so. The fire daimyo was about to negotiate the plan but an envoy from Wave came bringing word from the new daimyo Ains Ul gown. Tsunade's eyes widened Ains sent messengers. Kaharu nodded was it some sort of a threat? Kaharu shook her head no, rather he's willing to overlook the transgressions done against him for fire country is invited along with other countries to compete in a games tournament that he's holding and the daimyo foolishly agreed. Why didn't you stop him? The Hokage asked, I was about to but the Anbu escort we put told me it'll be beneficial. For Jiraiya approved of this himself the elder revealed as the Hokage gestured for her to continue yes, it appears that one of Jiraiya's spies had contacted the Anbu knowing about Ain's next course of action. Tsunade sighs since this something Jiraiya would do and won't tell her about it beforehand, she looks over to Shizun Shizun bring me files about our ninjas so we can decide who'll represent us in the games. Shizun bowed yes as she went to get the files. She smirked to herself you're really evolved from the loudmouth charge in headfirst little brother Naruto Shizun praised her little brother figure whom evolved from a loudmouth to the master planner he is now. Bridge of Kusa, Shaltir stood idly using a hiding spell that made her invisible while the improved Hiroko puppet that was on auto mode waited on the bridge. The waiting was over as a figure had arrived whom Shaltir recognized as Kabuto hello young master Sasori. Shaltir yawned seeing the interaction but also feeling Orochimaru's presence the fact that the snake thinks he's invisible is boring her to tears he's a whole lot more foolish than that blue haired human in our first world the vampire thought to herself as suddenly Kabuto was about to chop the puppet only for the auto puppet to activate the magic shield that stopped Kabuto's palm. Kabuto's eyes socket were so wide one would believe they would fall any moment now how? What is this? The spy asked outload before he smelled something burning which was way too close to him, he looks down seeing his own hand burning he quickly removed it as he screamed loudly in pain. Hiroko then brought out its sting tail and stabbed Kabuto's midsection injecting deadly fast acting poison the albino haired right hand of Orochimaru couldn't even let out a sound as his soul left his body. Orochimaru who was hiding for the window of attacking the puppeteer looked terrified at what he had just witnessed he remained at his spot for a while before attempting to escape. He backed out slowly before bumping into someone are you seriously one of the deadliest ninjas in the world? Shaltir asked mockingly as she wrapped her arm around Orochimaru's neck. Orochimaru chuckles well I am rather curious about you. You managed to improve Sasori's pathetic puppet, easily killing my right hand man and evading my senses easily. Shaltir yawns well I wouldn't really consider it an achievement due to how slow and weak the two of you are. Please underestimating me is a big m-i-s-a-t-k-e. Orochimaru shouted as hundreds of snakes shout out of his sleeves lunging at Shaltir's face making her yelp. Orochimaru smirks as he attempts to break free and turn around then attack Shaltir only for the vampire to relock him in her arm as she laughs. Did you really think this cheap trick could phase me? Orochimaru gulped in the first time he could consider ever how are you alive? Let alone being able to still lock me like this. 
The vampire chuckled I have complete resistance to all poisons for it was the way my creators the supreme beings wanted me to be to suit the tasks they gave me Orochimaru became intrigued at her comment maybe he could track down these supreme beings and learn their secrets. However, as he was thinking about it Shaltier sighed as she dug her fangs on his neck causing him to scream as she sucks a huge amount of his blood, enough to keep him out cold but not dead. Shaltier gets on the bridge dragging Orochimaru down with her as Hiroko approached the two, Hiroko search Orochimaru's mind for information the floor guardian ordered. The auto puppet nodded as it summoned a device that was attached to Orochimaru's head to take his secrets in speed sound and send them to Demigir's data collectors. Nazarick's sixth floor. The floor was the jungle level ruled by the dark elf twins. It has a long range jungle that was covered by a fake shy designed by the supreme being blue planet that changes based on the time of the day. A Roman Colosseum somewhere and it's also the Chimera Aunt's farm a set of NPCs that the supreme being Kaido designed when the guild were about to hit their NPC limits they agreed they needed more minions. Thus, Kaido designed the Chimera Ant King and Queen who can produce new minions with different attributes, advantages etc. Currently the floor has six newcomers calling it home being the tailed beasts. Ains is face to face with the very beast that made his life horrible it been a long time since our last meeting Kayubi. The fox shrugs I can't believe the loudmouthed idiot that was my jailer actually became this powerful. Oh, believe it Ains said long ago I dreamed of being the Hokage but now I am going to be something far greater. You're already here and can I ask a favor? The fox spoke seriously. Ains' eyes shone before he answered, what is it? When it's time to destroy that shitty village can I join? After all these fools have been draining my chakra and using me as a mass weapon factory and I would like to pay them back. I see no reason why I should nt. The fox smiled excellent. A light shone close to Ains being Demigir whom used the ring of Ains' ul gown to teleport to the floor. Ains turned around giving Demigir his attention. The demon kneeled before his master Ains Sama the messengers returned bringing good news, many daimyos including those who have the five major shinobi villages have accepted your invite. What about Kaspondent? The demon smirks it was a rather easy task for our assassins and Konoha are still unaware about Jiraiya's capture rather according to Shizun Kato they believe they are the ones who have the upper hand on us. Lastly Shaltier and the improved Hiroko had succeeded rather easily in their mission. It appears the secret to Orochimaru's immortality stems from the cursed seals. Elaborate. It seems the cursed seals have essence of his chakra meaning whenever he's killed, he could use the chakra of the cursed seals to reborn however it comes at the cost of losing the cursed seals, Shaltier also eliminated his right hand man Kabuto while discovering his numerous secret bases. Ains looked up thinking before looking back to Demigir prepare task forces to wreck Orochimaru's bases, Get rid of the cursed seals except for the one that Sasuke Uchiha posses while Anko's seal will be removed when we get her and finally order Shaltier to come back. Yes, Ains turned around that is all. Demigir got up as he kneeled one last time before teleporting. Ains sighs looking up something on your mind kit. Kayubi asked. Yes, when I reunited with Hinata I was ready to marry her on the spot but when she found out about other girls that are interested in me, she she wants you to break it to them. No, she's okay with it but she says that I am cheating them which honestly is true like all this time I devoted myself to living a new dream that I ignored simple things like this. And I can't really fault myself like Albedo and Shaltier were created by my friends which makes them like their daughters, I can't violate my friends daughters and for those that my friends didn't make well I just wasn't interested at the time or rather Hinata was always in my mind. Kayubi whistles well that's tough but let me tell you this, you're your own person follow your heart and I am sure your friends are going to be fine about this to entrust their creation's happiness to you. This my advice you can follow it if you want or not. Ains looked at Kayubi with thankful eyes thanks that actually reassuring, I never thought you would be so wise. Kayubi closes his eyes and grits his teeth in anger don't even think about me being stupid, after all I lived inside you for 12 years. Well thanks, Kayubi smirks you're welcome. Well once Shaltier arrives I'll have this talk with the girls Ains stated before turning around for now let's get ready for the games. Water country unknown location. The shinobis of Kiri are currently surrounding a lake in the middle of a forest, the thick mist is covering the majority of the place making it difficult for regular untrained people to see through but it doesn't bother the shinobi of Kiri for they have been trained to withstand this mist. 
One Chunin level shinobi looked tired as he was unable to resist his yawning. How long has it been? Shut up, you big baby, it only been three days, a Jonin scolded. Three days, and the three tailed beast still hasn't been resurrected. The Chunin questions. That caused the Jonin to slap him and cover his mouth before looking around. Seeing the cost is clear, the Jonin lets go of his hostage, you idiot, don't spell the beans out in the open. For all what we know, there might be Konoha spies or Akatsuki members. Yeah, we can't afford any more loses than we already have another Jonin commented rather grimly through the communication device. It's been three years since the end of the blood wars in Water Country. Unlike other shinobi or regular wars which was one nation against another the blood wars was a civil war between regular shinobis and those with bloodline limits, the hatred was there since the founding of Kiri village but became more apparent after the first ever shinobi world war where Kiri was one of the losing nations. Instead of acknowledging his mistakes the second Mizukage, who got the position after the first was killed in the war, instead blamed it on the clans of Kiri that they wanted more lands for their services which made Kiri stand alone in a chaotic front against many enemies, the citizens believed the Mizukage and began discriminating the clans. At first the clans ignored it but when the second war ended the new Mizukage proved to be worse than his predecessor as he willingly sold lands to other nobles lessening the village's power while also claiming that this was punishment for bloodline limit users as he sells their lands this was the last straw for many clans as they began to rebel resulting in the first blood war which lasted until the beginning of the third shinobi war as both parties agreed on a ceasefire but would return to bloodshed amongst themselves after the third war. The third Mizukage died during the war resulting in his closest assistant Yagura the Jinkruki of the Three Tails to be voted. Many breathed a sigh of relief hoping that Yagura being a Jinkruki would be able to close the rift the second and third Mizukages made between the people, at first their wishes seemed to prove them right but suddenly Yagura turned feral maximizing the amount of amount of bloodshed resulting in the extinction of many clans as well as many high level shinobi like the seven swordsmen of the mist to go rouge. Mei Terumi a woman born to two clans have founded her own faction who combated the fourth Mizuka Jigura and finally won two years ago but their victory proved to be bittersweet because by the time the war ended Konoha had begun their militarization and attacked water country at the day of Mace victory taking about half of the nation under their territory. The shinobi remain in their places as they return their gazes to the lake where Mei hid Yagura's body should the three tails revive they make a new Jinkruki. Still even though we joined an anti-Konoha alliance was it a good idea to let the Six Tails Jinkruki go? The Chunin asked. It couldn't be helped Yutakata is a good spy and he only helped us in the finale battle and continues to do now because Mei respects him as well as that girl Hanada, not to mention the Six Tails alone isn't strong enough to withstand the Kyubi the Jonin answered. The Chunin sighs seeing that the former Hyuga girl helped them by getting Yutakata to join Mei's side and the girl continues being their best ally in this nearly futile war against Konoha. Before they can reflect longer the water of the lake began shaking alerting them, they take their stances before the three tails beast got out roaring its return to the plane of the living the Jonin immediately activates his contact headphones the three tails is alive. He announced but he doesn't receive any response. Again. The Jonin presses on his ear can you hear me squad alpha? He asked. As the Chunin approached his superior seeing what's wrong the Chunin suddenly stopped as he screamed loudly in pain, hey, what's wrong? The Jonin asked approaching the Chunin but was stopped by a giant sword that had bandages wrapped all around it. The Jonin's eyes widened as he recognized the sword, his eyes fearfully followed the edge seeing a smirking Kisame. The Jonin fallen on his back out of fear as he slowly retreats back, Kisame smirks further as he approaches him come on don't be like that, I just came home so welcome me with a nice red soup which is your blood if you didn't figure it out already the Jonin yells loudly in fear as he speeds up his pace before bumping into someone, he fearfully looks up being greeted by a pair of Mangekio Sharangan eyes that shine brightly. The Jonin saw his life go through his eyes as he had slowly fallen to his death, Kisame tchs why did you that Itachi? I wanted a nice red soup. Itachi simply walks by his partner we can't lose any more time we must make haste or Konoha might find out about this. Kisame tchs again as he follows after his partner as the two men reach the lake Itachi glanced at Kisame you can go in and subdue the beast of you like. Kisame smirked widely as he was about to jump in, then suddenly Itachi tackled Kisame down avoiding as Kanai's that rained down almost hitting Kisame. 
The two look over to where the attack hit seeing about a thousand kanais planted on the ground sorry but that creature is ours said a girl's voice causing both men to look over seeing Lakaius and her party blue roses. Kisame smirks well who are guys? I don't reckon seeing any funny characters matching you in the bingo book. Lakaius smirks as she dramatically takes a stance putting her sword in front of her face as she closes her eyes we are the number one adamantine adventuring party of the sorcerer kingdom not to mention only all female guild. I am Gargaron the wall in bronze the giant armored woman of the group introduced herself as she griped her hammer ready for the fight. I am Evely the masked girl introduced herself looking bored behind her mask. Were Tia and Tina the shinobi twins the twins introduced themselves. Lakaius then spun around for dramatic effect as she pointed her sword at the duo and I am their courageous leader Lakaius Alvain Dale together were blue roses. The Akatsuki duo simply stared at the group before them Itachi coughed what is your goal? If you stand in our way, well guarantee your deaths. Gargaron smirked so we're fighting after all as she jumped up slamming her hammer down on Kisame, the swordsman smirks as he pulls out his sword blocking Gargaron's attack. He swings his sword as Gargaron backflips landing on her feet smiling as she lets out a battle cry charging at Kisame whom mimics her action. Itachi simply looked unapprovingly at his partner's way as he rushes towards the lake before Evely jumps in his way stopping him, the Uchiha jump backwards immediately avoiding damage he takes a moment to catch his breath he uses his Sharangan to see through his opponent only for his eyes to widen as she doesn't breath nor is her heart beating what are you. You don't need to know much Evely replied as she activates her icicle spell sending needles of ice towards the Uchiha whom activates the great fireball jutsu burning her icicles creating a steam scream. Evely waves her hands clearing the steam seeing her opponent had disappeared, suddenly Evely sent a backfist that connected to Itachi's chin sending the older Uchiha skidding across the ground. He didn't have time to react as Evely suddenly appeared in front of him kicking him violently as he coughs, he looks around seeing Lakaius approaching the lake as she starts chanting a spell. While the ninja twins go towards a certain direction that makes Itachi do a double take, Evely caught unto this don't worry about your leash holders dog Tia and Tina are going to finish them off before they get here. Itachi looks at Evely with widened eyes how did you know? We have our ways she answered as she again kicked the Uchiha sending him skidding, Itachi immediately stopped himself as he got up rushing at Evely whom takes a fighting stance. Itachi sends an open palm strike that Evely blocks as she sends a punch to the Uchiha's stomach making him flinch momentarily as Evely took advantage of this small window sending an open palm strike at the mon's face as he had fallen to the ground coughing. Meanwhile Kisame was faring a bit better than his partner against his foe, the armored woman was strong and had enough stamina to keep up with him. Kisame and Gargaron yelled loudly as their weapons clashed yet again sending the two back further apart. They both have satisfying smirks on their faces I have to say you're quite fun to fight against Kisame praised. Gargaron smirk widened you're not bad yourself pal. Itachi sees this with contempt Kisame stop fooling around we must get the three tails. Kisame sighed as he looks towards Gargaron sorry but our fight ends now he stated as he began launching water cannons through his mouth and onto the ground creating waves that he rides. Gargaron smirked as she took her stance rearing her hammer back. As Kisame wave reached Gargaron she released a battle cry as she swung her hammer destroying the waves in an instant as Kisame jumped backwards landing on his feet. Lakaius was finished as a brilliant blue light shined within the water, the light became brighter as it was swimming up the water and it got out. Inside the blue ball of light is the three tails that looked terrified as the light engulfed him, calm down three tail guy we're getting you back to your family Lakaius assured the turtle as he calmed down while the light brightened in a blinding manner as everyone covered their eyes, once the light subsided the three tails was nowhere to be seen. Itachi's eyes were widened as he displayed surprise and awe in his nearly non-expressional face what h happened. Lakaius smirked as she looked at the Uchiha we saved this poor creature from your shady organization. Itachi was about to say something but the twins returned as they landed on their feet were back. Did these Konoha guys cause any problems to you guys? Lakaius asked. Tia shook her head no, they were easy to deal with. Yes, they were unaware of our presence as we snuck a bomb in their camp Tina answered. Itachi eyes widened in fear Konoha Shinobi. Kisame asked looking confused. Lakaius nodded yes, it appears Konoha managed to sneak some of their forces through the merchant guild in order to strip Kiri of three tails lessening any chances of anyone matching their power. Impossible we made sure no one from Konoha was aware of this Kisame argued, 
he doesn't really care about run-ins but even he has to admit something suspicious is going on. Since Konoha doesn't even know about this lake as far as he's concerned, he was a swordsman of the mist so he knew this information rather he's the one who deduced to pain that made Terumi would hide the Jinkrukus corpse here. Tia simply threw something at Kisame's feet, the giant man picks it up seeing a Konoha forehead protector. The swordsman eyes widen seeing that the strangers weren't lying about the presence of Konoha ninja seeing this forehead protector as fresh not broken or damaged. It doesn't matter Itachi yelled out as he glared at Lakaius bring the three tails back now. Before Lakaius could answer a rain of arrows was launched as Kisame tackled his partner raising his sword up protecting them from the arrows, the lizardmen archers came as they were led by the lizardmen male chiefs and Zaryusu. Kyuku stood forward as he pointed his spear at them now we suggest for you to surrender these rings he suggested. Kisame was rather intrigued as he instead griped his sword further as he was ready to fight further but was stopped by Itachi were retreating. Sorry but we need these rings Zinbaru announced as he clutched his giant fist as it was enveloped by iron. The giant crocodile-like lizardman jumped up as he landed down hitting the ground separating the duo from each other. Itachi coughed as he got on his hands and knees. Evely appeared above him as she kicked him again. Kisame was locking weapons again with Gargaron as the two smirk widely, Gargaron activated a skill through her hammer making it enveloped in a black iron substance. With the improved power Gargaron was able to overpower Kisame as she pushes him on his hands and knees, Kisame activates his sword attempting to suck the woman's chakra but nothing comes making Kisame confused which only allowed Gargaron to plant the man inside the dirt as he was concussed by the hammer hitting his head violently. Itachi sees this as he activates his Mangekio, a red ribcage appears around Itachi which protects him from Evelie's assault. The ribcage grows further turning into a Suzano that pushes Evelie away while also securing Kisame, immediately Itachi activates his eyes again as he and Kisame are sucked inside a black hole. Hey, get back here and fight, yelled Zinbaru in anger what a bunch of cowards. It doesn't matter that thy got away Kyuku said we were here to destroy Orochimaru's base the fact that the three tails happened to be here was a coincidence, still I understand your feeling that we could have got an extra bonus by bringing the Akatsuki rings. He's correct Evely replied we came here to destroy Orochimaru's base nothing more. The group of Nazarick forces were ordered to come here to get rid of Orochimaru's base while collecting anything of value, which came here when Lakaius found out the purpose of this base was to capture the three tails. Orochimaru was impressed with how his former village used the Kyubi to get this powerful and he knew he can do it better so he sought out any tailed beast he could get his hands on which led him to three tails, since it was grounded here and didn't have a Jinkruki. Suddenly Zaryusu pressed on his ears yes Zaryusu here. Zaryusu how's the mission? Kokaitis asked from the other side. It was successful not to mention we managed to get an extra point by getting the three tails. Interesting anything else? Yes. We actually had a run-in with the Akatsuki organization members Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshikage. Delve deeper. Zaryusu nodded as he explained the encounter in detail. Very well the three tails is more enough bonus you can return now to wave for the games, I have high expectations for you there. Of course Zaryusu said since he would compete in the dual tournament by Kositis request. Akatsuki hideout aim. Kisame kneeled before Pain whom was overlooking the rainy sky from his window did these people say anything about that man Ames? Pain asked. No, they didn't but it's safe to assume they are on his side given they don't possess chakra and were powerful Kisame answered. Conan closed her eyes and thought it's been three years since they were supposed to start their plan but until now, they didn't even collect one beast for the various circumstances more specifically a certain village dam Konoha Pain said in a whisper. Kisame perked up as he remembered something important actually Konoha ninja were there. Konan eyes perked up as she glared at Kisame what? Kisame explained what happened when two ninjas with the group of strangers went somewhere and spoke about getting rid of Konoha ninja easily and even shown the proof by throwing a brand new Konoha forehead protector at Kisame's feet. Is Itachi still recovering? Pain asked. Yes. He used his eyes after a long time which causes him to faint not to mention his opponent beating of him Conan answered, he won't be able to do much for a long while. Pain looked grim as he was suspicious of this information Kisame shared. Konoha Hokage office, Tsunade gazed with a calculating look in her eyes, in front of her are the gathered best ninjas they have to compete in the wave games as well as gathering information. 
First is Team 7 consisting of Kakashi the Copy Nin his experience should be useful in bouts as well as considering the fact he's a former Anbu he can sneak around in special locations and finally copy any moves through his Sharangan he's by far the most reliable man Tsunade has in this disastrous team. Sai the painter just like Kakashi he's a former Anbu and still is also will be useful in sneaking around not to mention he has a good sealing background perhaps he could seal any of the undead Meliscula revived for testing however he's one of Danzo's route making him a wildcard at best and untrustworthy at worst given whom his real master is but would have to do for now. Sakura Haruno she did train under Tsunade for a while but didn't do much progress and she quitted halfway through preferring to lazing around. Continuing being on diet and doing regular labor she mostly focuses on being Sasuke's good wife which is her only redeeming quality since unlike many of her fellow academy students she didn't move on from Sasuke and actually is the hope of making a new Uchiha clan. By ninja standards she should still be a genin but was given a special chunin written test after her parents whom are high members of the civilian council bribed the shinobi whom is in charge of ranks since Sasuke doesn't want a weakling wife. She's here also because of her parents' influence but Tsunade is willing to give her a chance since they don't know what games Ains thought of. And finally Sasuke Uchiha whom is currently Konoha's groomed boy and proclaimed number one shinobi Tsunade doesn't want him there due to his temper and bad attitude which would jeopardize their mission of collecting information about Ains but he would be useful in the games but he along with Sakura aren't going to be part of the spy network. Next is Team 8 consisting of Kiba one of the two heirs of the Inazuka clan his animalistic fighting style should be useful in the games as well as tracking skills which would be useful in tracking Ains important subordinates. And Shino the heir of the Abarame clan his insects should be able to sneak inside the clothing of some of Ains most trustworthy subordinates to learn more about the man by listening in his private conversations with the subordinate in question. Team 10 consisting of Asuma Saratubi unlike his fellow shinobis he's not going to compete because he'll be attending as the fire daimyo's guard due to him being one in the past he would be able to oversee the fire daimyo's interactions with the other daimyo's and especially Ains since he became the wave daimyo. Ino Yamanaka she has also trained under Tsunade unlike Sakura she completed her training and actually is a passable chunin she can use the switch mind jutsu with Ains subordinates learning their secrets and what other stuff Ains entrusted them with. Choji Akamichi he's more useful in the games than anything else. Finally Shikimaru Nara the strategist would be useful in the games as well in collecting information, the lazy Nara really doesn't want to go back to wave not only as his lazy skeleton wants to stay home but his instincts are crying at him to stay away from these monsters. Some solo shinobis include Anko who would be useful in information collecting and catching targets. Maru and his team would be useful at the games even though no one trusts them due to their loyalty to the now dead Naruto they have proven to be Konoha's best team even surpassing the teamwork of the Konoha 12. Hanabi Hayuga and her fiancé Hideki Hayuga whom are the Hayuga clan's proudest fighters they're here just to increase numbers and because of their clan. And finally Guy Maida even though Tsunade doesn't want him involved due to the death of his students the man is determined to avenge them in any way and shape possible including collecting information since it's the best way to honor their deaths. Tsunade clears her throat as she overlooks them all right we have gathered all of you here as the best shinobis Konoha has to offer. This an opportunity to show the other villages who's the strongest some like Sasuke. Hanabi and Hideki smirked arrogantly while Maru and his team were having unapproving looks on their eyes but this isn't the only reason. As you already know a mysterious man calling himself Ains Ulgaon had made himself an enemy of a great threat to Konoha our job there isn't only to win but to collect information about him weaknesses, loopholes in his forces and other things we can use in our advantage. Sakura PFFT as she smirks don't worry Lady Hokage Sasuke will win all of the games and that loser Ains would give everything he has to Sasuke once he sees he's beneath Sasuke. Maru looked at Sakura as if she grew another head do you really think that Ains a man who healed Konkuro, reached the land of rivers before you and beaten the Akatsuki by himself would be impressed by Sasuke. He asked pointing out actual facts and if we believe the guy not even Itachi can stand up to the woman that was with him. Sasuke looked at Maru with rage shut your mouth if you know what's good for you brat. I am the most powerful shinobi Konoha had produced in years I was rookie of the year no one was able to touch me, I led many successful missions and I am currently an active member of the shinobi council. Maru wasn't threatened as he turned around whistling uncaring about what the Uchiha said which only frustrates his fangirl hey, did you not hear Sasuke brat? If you did then apologize. 
I don't need to since nothing he said is true Maru simply replied angering Sasuke further as he caught the boy by his collar. Repeat that again. I said nothing you said is true don't believe me let's break it down. First you became rookie of the year because the village wanted to satisfy your ego because I am certain Shino or Shikimaru was supposed to be the rookie of the year. You didn't lead any missions rather it was Kakashi or other Jonans there that lead the missions behind your back, you're an active member of the Shinobi Council. Then why don't I see something major contributed by you? Oh yeah because you're just a puppet and you say no one touched you well plenty did. Zabuza and Haku, Lee, Gara, Itachi, Orochimaru, the Sound 4 and of course Naruto. Sasuke was livid of Maru as he attempted to punch him but was stopped by Kakashi enough. Tsunade yelled out in anger you two are grown shinobis so act like ones. The meeting was over as the members went to back their stuff. Maru why did you provoke Sasuke? We could have been punished and not allowed to join Udon said. He's right Moegi argued the Uchiha really likes to hold childish grudges. Maru smirked don't worry Gramps student knows our worth and I just wanted to provoke Sasuke a little before we join big bro Naruto in wave. Udon and Moegi simply nodded as they too look forwards to meeting Naruto again. Nazarick Ain's office. Shaltir arrived as she knocked on the doors come in her lord ordered as she entered. Hello Lord I Shaltir was ready to announce herself in a flirty manner before seeing all of her rivals in romance here. Aris, Aqua, Evely, Albedo, Zeshi, Yusaka, Rias Grimori, Akino Himahime, Samiramis, Medea, Medusa, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, Tamamo no Mei, Palutena, Rosalina, L.A. Rachel, Lana, Elise Katarina von Hohenheim, Louise Jorand Aurelia Alphelbake, Ina Suzanne Hirenbrandt, Queen Elizabeth of Oxford, Elsa, Musubi, Tsukiyumi, Kazahana, Matsu, Dao Jun, Helena Douglas and Kasumi. The women don't seem to be okay being in the same room together evident by the auras they're releasing, Ain simply releases a little bit of his aura making them silent. Once he sees all of them are silent he clears his voice ladies I have summoned all of you here today because I finally decided to solve the issue of not having an heir. Upon hearing these words the girls all said to pick them until they noticed each other's and began fighting again Ains releases his aura silencing them as I was saying I decided that all of you would carry an heir of mine no one of you will be left. Lord Ains who will be the head wife? Dao Jun asked. It'll be me a voice announced revealing herself as Hinata whom took her place next to the overlord me and Ains knew are each other's the longest and I was the first to confess to him, even after I thought he died I kept his memory in me refusing to look at another man. I was the same I honestly knew about your feelings since you were showy about them but I focused mostly on my conquest and didn't pay you attention and because Hinata was still on my mind. I don't ask you to accept this but I ask you to respect this for both of us dreamed of reuniting together someday Ains said in an emotional tone that caught his harem struck since he barely spoke like that about love. Naruto Hanada cried out as she hugged him. Hanada Ains called out hugging her. The girls were heartbroken as they looked to each other, they appeared to speak telepathically as Albedo kneeled before her master we understand if it means your happiness then well give up our wishes of being your head wife, still well be your wife's. I accept Ains said now raise your heads because I have something to share with you all. What is it? Wonder Woman asked. How do I say this? Do you remember the whole me being a skeleton and not having the thing? Yes, all of us do Aqua said as it was a known fact. Well I actually figured out a way to do it. Almost all the girls approached him how long? L.A. Rachel asked. When? Shaltier asked. Okay calm down and I'll tell you Ains calm them down. Meanwhile on the seventh floor, Demigir was currently interrogating one of the spies whom was bound to the electric chair, the man has seen better days as he's fearful of the demon in front of him so, Itachi Uchiha why is he loyal to that village? Demigir asked. I don't know that kid is messed up if you ask me the spy said like how can someone kill their own family? How can someone continue working for the village that is planning on making an Uchiha clan that is loyal to them like tools? He's either plain insane or his mom dropped him on his head when he was a baby. Yes, I see so there are some things Jiraiya's spy network doesn't know aside from Orochimaru related stuff Demigir mused to himself. The spy looked hopefully at the demon that means you're going to let me go. Demigir laughed as the spy laughed nervously along with him no, we're not going to let go you'll tell Konoha about us which might ruin my lord's plan for them. 
Sure he can come up with a new one but he really likes this one. P please I am just a simple civilian. Why did you work for Jiraiya then? I had no choice I was jobless and my wife was going to leave me so I agreed to just snoop around. I see that Konoha has no way to fight you guys so I won't tell them anything honest. You might keep your promise but Konoha don't need to make you talk am I right? They can just use a Yamanaka. They don't know I work for Jiraiya. The Sanin spy network is effective because not even his own allies know the identity of all of his spies. There is Root. The spy face turned pale as tried to back away how did you know? He asked knowing he can't lie to this monster or hell torture him again and he doesn't want to experience this place's torturing methods again. Demigir smirked arrogantly as he loved the surprise and fear the human had well I was interrogating the spies that are in charge of delivering payments to the other spies and I noticed that you have more money than those that are the same rank as you which led me to believe you work for more than one man, of course the other can't be out of Konoha since a coward like you wouldn't gamble by helping the enemy out so you chose the man in the shadows Danzo I believe that is his name. The spy looked down knowing this his end kill me if you want but please leave my family alone. Don't worry Lord Ains is a fair man he won't punish your family for your own sins only you. The spy breathed a sigh of relief. Ains office. Demigir was walking towards the office bringing good news to his lord as he was making his way, he hears another pair of footsteps. Curios the demon looks to the side seeing Kokaitis also making his way to the office Kokaitis it's quite a surprise we're both heading to the office, I believe the Orochimaru base task along with the security measures are complete. Kokaitis nodded yes, all of the bases are gone the only cursed seals left are those in Konoha and our raid squads have been called back. The security measures are also complete. What about you? I have gathered a lot of good information I would have preferred if we got more but beggars can't be choosers. The two arrived at the office's doors as they knocked on it come in Ain said from the other side. Demigir opens the door as he sees the mess the office became Lord Ains are you alright? Was there an attack? Kokaitis asked. No, it was just another girl fight their lord answered making both men sigh knowing what he means by girl fight so, what brings you here? The raids on Orochimaru's bases are complete as you ordered all the bases have been destroyed and all the cursed seals outside Konoha have been clenched, the raid squads have returned to wave and the water country raid squad managed to capture the three tails during their raid Kokaitis reported. I see I was curious about the Three Tails' sudden appearance in the sixth floor but Evely had already told me the details Ains said. The security measures are complete no one can get in or out without us learning what they have done, Aura and Mare had finished their tasks as well and they asked me to report it to you Kokaitis continued. Ains nods very well, what about you Demigir? I was interrogating the spies as usual but unfortunately I didn't find anything about Itachi's reasons for being loyal to that village but we found something else the leaders of the anti-Konoha alliance are having a secret meeting regarding the new wave daimyo and his standing in this war. When and where? Ains asked. It'll be held in about two hours in lightning country within the valley of clouds and lightning, if you're going to meet them then I suggest taking a raid squad with you as Konoha are aware of this and actually sent ninjas to kill the leaders. Ains gets up from his office call the Pleiades. Lightning country secret meeting room. Inside a secret location the leaders of the anti-Konoha alliance have gathered consisting of the 4th Reikage accompanied by his bodyguards C and Darui, the 5th Mizukage Meitarumi also accompanied by her guards Ao and Chojuro, the 5th Case Cage Gara accompanied by his siblings and the 3rd Suchikage Onoki accompanied by his granddaughter Kuritsuchi and Akatsuchi. Other guests included the three female daimyos Toki, Kazahana and Haruna accompanied by their samurais. A clears his throat as he begins the meeting as you may already know Wave had at first fallen into fire country or rather Konoha's control, but something happened mysterious beasts appeared and drove Konoha forces out giving the land to their master a man named Ains Ulgaon. Yes, I heard about him Onoki said our earth daimyo accepted an invitation from him for a games competition he's holding. Iwa will do its best to win and impress him. Kumo as well will be competing a said and if Konoha is there too we need to double our efforts to get Ains on our side. Yes, we should all focus on winning the games and get this guy Ains in our side Kazahana said we don't possess a ninja village but our regular forces should do well especially with our new training regime Toki and Haruna nodded along with Kazahana. Did Hinata's squad contact any of you? 
Onoki asked we haven't heard from her for a while now last time she spoke to me was when she and her group followed a huge amount of Konoha spies into a bar of some kind. The leaders each exchange information all confirming they haven't heard from Hanada themselves. May seems to have spaced a little Ains, I wonder what kind of man he is she chuckled as she blushed I can tell from the stories he's quite powerful commanding these beasts, this only brings more curiosity into what the man is capable of. Oh no she's at it again Ow thought grimly milady please focus on the task at hand we can't possibly convince this man into being our ally by bribing him with sex he might already have. He stopped as May glared at him stop or I'll kill you. Suddenly a black portal opened making the bodyguards draw their weapons, Ains gets out of the portal wearing his usual disguise he raises his hands put your weapons down I am here as an ally. The leaders don't buy it, Gara coughs gaining attention please listen to this man for he was my savior and is willing to join our alliance. The leaders look at Gara Young K's cage what do you mean? Onoki asked. This man is the new wave daimyo Ains himself Gara revealed, all of them stare at Ains seeing that he came over to them. Hello, thank you for receiving Master K's cage Ains said as Gara simply bowed to him. Ains gazes at the others fear not for I am against Konoha. What proof do you have? I asked he would like to jump in joy that they already have Ains in their side but this could be a trick. Pleiades Ains calls, soon in what appeared to be wind speed the Pleiades with the exception of Narbaral appeared carrying heads of Konoha Shinobi does this suffice? What is this? Onoki asked, Konoha knew about this meeting through their close spies but thankfully since we got Jiraiya's spies captured we knew about this Yuri Alpha revealed our lord is in your side so I ask of you to hear him out. The leaders nodded giving Ains their attention good that's more like it now let's discuss the games the overlord said in a satisfied manner. Day of the festival wave country. Yuri along with Beta stood in the great Naruto bridge as thousands of horses are heard, the daimyos arrived as well as their ninjas and samurais whom will compete in the upcoming games. As the horses stopped before the two maids they bowed welcome to wave I am Lord Ains head maid Yuri Alpha and please allow me to welcome you all as well as thank you for taking part of this festival my lord had prepared Yuri said in a respectful tone. Before we begin, our lord has prepared a large welcome party for you beta continued. Well I have to say I am quite grateful for this but where is Ains? The lightning daimyo asked. Lord Ains is currently busy and he apologizes for not welcoming you all personally Yuri answered now, please follow us. The elemental people did as they were told and followed the maids until they reached the other side of the bridge, the elemental people were taken back seeing a large building that looks like a fortress before them. In front of the fortress the Shinsengumi stood a hem, everyone please stand still as we inspect you Kondo the Shinsengumi's leader said, we just want to make sure no smuggling or illegal stuff are being transported. The elemental people conceded as the Shinsengumi searched them thankfully no one was found. After the inspection Toshi glared at the elemental people now, you're here as guests of Lord Ains as long as you stay here you're expected to follow the rules. No stalking, no cheating in the games, no fighting outside of the games and most important being respectful, am I clear? Sasuke looked bored hearing this man he doesn't feel any power from him making the Uchiha ignore him. This didn't go unnoticed as Sogo fired a bazooka at the Uchiha missing him by a small margin making Ash near him Sasuke snapped hey, what was that for? He yelled don't you know who I am? The sadistic samurai simply chuckled oh this was a warning shot if this bazooka hit you then only ashes will be left he then gave the elemental people his sadistic smile this goes for all of you if you as much as break one of these laws I won't miss nor is anyone missing, got that? They all nodded seeing this weapon that is destructive. Konoha eyed the weapon interested how this metal thing fired a powerful shot. The Shinsengumi lined up now, please follow our members into your assigned rooms Kondo asked nicely. After a while inside a restaurant, the elemental people got settled in their hotel rooms as they attended the large dinner party that Ains prepared for them. As they took their seats Sanji the head chief came over pouring liquor into the cups of the higher ups being the daimyos and cages. Sanji of course began flirting with the females oh beautiful Kazuhana your beauty is like an early spring that shines through the remaining winter snow he then looked over to Tokyo your beauty is that of a flock with colorful wings that reflects the rays of the sun he then did the same with Haruna oh you're the beautiful spring of my heart that melts my sadness away. The kitchen's door opened revealing a non too pleased Soma and Arena dude come on I know flirting is your thing but we need you inside Soma cried. 
Sanji came over as the appetizers were served to the elemental people whom at first were spectacle of the food as they never saw things like these before but it was rude to turn them away. Thankfully one bite had changed it all as they began chewing down on their food after the dinner party and a huge applause to the chefs. Thank you our chefs are grateful for you apperception of their food Yuri said, now inside each leader's room as the forums of the games explaining them from rules to genre and how to win please have them filled up by tomorrow as after tomorrow will begin. The competitions are ready to take as all forums and competitors been filled and confirmed my lord Yuri Alpha spoke as she kneeled before her master. Ains played with the wine glass in his hand before he chugged it down in one gulp before he got up and swung his arm perfect let's go ahead with the plan everyone and let's enjoy a wonderful show. Yes my lord, everyone replied in unison, Hanada smiled devilishly beside Ains throne I wonder what my father will think of me when he sees me. He 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 no need to worry Hanada the reaction hell give use will be the one we need in our plan to destroy Konoha Ains assured her. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. Trumpets were sounded off with many confettis exploding with cheers and shouts for the start of the games. Tsunade along with the other cages were lead by Yuri Alpha to the private booth in the arena reserved for them the blonde haired Hokage kept her eyes to the above booth where the daimyos would be. Asuma noticed her with a nod from his place behind their fire daimyo who was getting stink eyes from the other daimyos hello everyone and welcome to the first round of the wave games. Spoke a well-dressed man with blonde hair mustache and beard wearing green shades now introducing our esteemed host and daimyo please welcome Ains Ulul Gaon. The earth shacked as people cheered and sang from the distance the cages and the other daimyos along with their guards watched in horror as a giant golem made out of rock was approaching the arena awe. Many people screamed in fear at the sight of the monster such noise I demand silence. The boom of he menacing yet authoritative voice calmed the people as they saw a figure standing on top of the head of the beast that of Ains covering his skeletal form under his robes and wearing his mask along with gloves now with the daimyo fan on the top of his head that had the kanji for wave imprinted on it. The monster stopped before the arena as it kneeled allowing Ains to gracefully jump off right unto his seat on the middle among the other daimyos who were all disturbed and fearful roar. The golem cried out before it disappeared in a flash of light Ains stood off from his seat as he approached the edge of the daimyo booth raising his arms up to address his people and guests to begin I would like to thank everyone that answered their calls for this gaming tournament, for the longest time wave had been a stop for all merchants and a very decisive location for military expeditions for that reason it was silently agreed for it to be neutral and welcoming for everyone. All remained silent to absorb his words as of now rather well admit it or not we are in the midst of a war among shinobi villages the fourth great shinobi war if I dare say, this land wasn't spared either so to try soften relations as well as help troops to unwind we are holding these games so let us all have fun. Yeah, many people cheered at the words of the wave daimyo. Ains returned to his seat as the daimyos applauded him along with that of the fire daimyo. Taking advantage of the excitement the announcer grinned now in our first competition we're hosting a one-on-one -on -one hand to hand fights. He pointed into the sky where a giant blimp was flying carrying a TV screen displaying the names of the competitors. Meita Guy vs Kanichi Shirahama. Sakura Haruno vs Mai Shiranui. Sasuke Uchiha vs Omi. Hanabi Hayuga vs Hanada Hayuga. Omoi vs Jago. Kuritsuchi vs Kiba Inazuka. Choji Akamichi vs Shizuka, Karui vs Asuka Kazama, Kahio vs Toph Baifong, Matsuri vs Shikimaru Nara. Who is facing Hanabi? Hasashi asked in both surprise and anger from where he sat next to his clansmen who had similar reactions. In the daimyo booth Asuma leaned in to whisper to the fire daimyo as Kaspondon nodded turning to his real master Mr. Ains I would like to know whether there's a typo in the announcements. I assure you nothing is wrong Ains corrected. Then please hand over Hanada Hayuga Asuma spoke up. The overlord turned to the chain smoker with a glare which had his eyes shining brightly crimson behind his mask excuse me. W well Asuma gulped feeling terrified greatly from that one glare. What my guard means is that this person is a wanted criminal Kaspondon nervously corrected he really needs that shower after all this acting like a pathetic human. Regardless of what you think wave is a neutral territory we answer to none but ourselves and Hinata Hayuga is a mercenary whose services I paid for and she offered to fill up my roster. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. Down in the arena the competitors began making their way in with 10 stone platforms being put in place for the fights, 
Guy entered his platform being greeted by a young man with short spiky brown hair and confident smirk whilst Sakura looked on with envy at her opponent a very beautiful and buxom woman with long silky brown hair wearing a red costume that leaves very little left to the imagination and Sasuke looked down with disgust at a bald dwarf wearing a red shell in GI is this a joke? What is the joke? asked the dwarf. The Uchiha sat at the level of the dwarf for you my opponent. Yes I am my name is Omiya Shaolin Monk that commands the element of water the boy proclaimed proudly. Sasuke chuckled before he laughed angering Omi the arrogant Uchiha looked up to the daimyo booth hey Ains get me a real opponent. The overlord had to use some passive magic skills from stopping his servant to jump in and kill the Uchiha for the disrespectful way of talking to their master Sasuke Uchiha this a friendly competition not of pride if you wish he'll disqualify you and give the win to Omi. Sasuke sneered at this you think I can't win. Isn't this why you wanted a different opponent? Ains asked with a sarcastic tone of voice that made some laugh much to Sasuke's anger. HMPH fine but don't cry when I kill him Sasuke turned back to Omi with a sadistic smirk that made the boy monk narrow his eyes at him. It's been a long time traitor Hanabi coldly greeted her disowned older sister. That it had how is being the heir of a clan feels? Hanada asked. Not much going on aside from keeping the status quo, what brought you here? I am a free woman my services belong to whoever pays me well. In money or sex, influence Hanada answered. Omoe steeled himself facing the man before him a monk wearing shinobi clothing as both were required to take off their weapons. Hey there how about we go out after I beat you? Kiba asked in arrogance as he licked his lips checking Kuritsuchi out. The granddaughter of the Suchikage vomited a bit in her mouth no thanks I don't want any dog stink on me. Sorry if I end this quickly I need to see how strong Ains is Shizuka told Choji who opted to remain silent. Karui and Asuka smirked towards one another as they both smashed fists. Kahio Yuki closed her eyes standing before a girl who's blind. Troublesome facing someone from Suna again Shikimaru muttered facing Matsuri. To think I would stand before the man that once interested Lady Tamari this a once in a lifetime opportunity Matsuri spoke as she looked over to the cage booth to see Gara. Fighters get ready and start. Guy rushed at the young man before him throwing his kicks but he easily caught them before he spun Guy around the green beast managed to land on both his hands as he helicoptered his legs at Kanichi who managed to block them sending a kick to Guy's gut making the adult Jonan roll back clutching it he looked up just in time for Kanichi giving him a spin kick to the face before he grabbed Guy first hitting him with a karate chop to the back of his neck followed then elbow strikes from Muay Thai to his gut before finishing it off with a jump followed by a kung fu kick that sent Guy flying out. Kanichi Shurahama wins. The announcer cried out much to the shock of Konoha Sense Guy as their best hand to hand combatant acknowledged as the best in all corners of the shinobi world, yet this kid none heard of until now beaten him. Kanichi bowed the crowd as they cheered before he left to await his next opponent between Sakura or Mai. Kanichi's opponent's identity was pretty obvious as soon as the battle began, Sakura rushed blindly at Mai, throwing sluggish punches and kicks that the adult and more beautiful Kunoichi was able to counter and block before throwing far more precise and elegant attacks at Sakura. The pink haired was barely standing on her knees, her breath turned rigged with many bruises and swellings coloring her body ill take down cow. Mai looked at Sakura with a lazy glare as she easily blocked another sluggish punch before kneeing Sakura in her stomach making her fall and cough uncontrollably disappointing Mai further when Ains asked her to come and compete in a gaming tournament he's holding in a world dominated by shinobi she expected to finally meet some match but alas this girl is obviously far from being a shinobi please surrender I look like the bad guy here pummeling someone so weak. I comma I, I'll not let you take Sasuke. Sakura screamed as she lunged at yet again at Mai who shook her head rather than block she evaded getting behind Sakura before grabbing the arm that had the clenched fist in it and twisted behind Sakura making the pink haired fangirl cry out in pain. Listen girl I am new around here and I don't know who this Sasuke guy is but I am already taken Mai spoke trying to be civil. What you spread your legs for that Ains guy? Sakura asked with a smirk I knew that man was a pig when I first saw him. Sorry to disappoint but it's not Ains my answered much to Sakura's shock not that she had time to react as my twisted her arm breaking it with a rather sickly crunch making Sakura cry out in pain, my released her hold on Sakura who fell face first on the stone floor crying as she held her arm while the referee checked on her before pointing at my. My Shiranui wins. 
The announcer spoke as more and more people cheered obviously not from Konoha happy to see another one of them eating the dust which helped ease some of the men that cried knowing Maya's taken. Meanwhile the Konoha group while expecting the pink-haired banshee to lose were becoming more alert at the way the competition is going for them. Sasuke threw a kick at the young monk who jumped over it before he kneed the Uchiha in the face followed by a boot to his face. The last Uchiha staggered back holding his face in anger as he rushed at Omi before going down to sweep the young monk who fell back allowing a smirk to appear on Sasuke's face as he threw another kick towards Omi but the young monk managed to stand back on his hands and pushed himself above the kick the Uchiha thrown at his way. Sasuke's eyes widened at this which what Omi needed to roll in the air towards the Uchiha and give him a long-winded spin kick that sent the Uchiha flying back out of the arena unto the wall Omi wins. Silence fell on the arena before cheers erupted as Konoha's prize boy had been defeated, Sasuke picked himself off of the wall glaring at Omi who smirked at him the Uchiha who brought his hand up as it began to emit electricity before any more foolish actions took place Sasuke found a giant blade pressed against his neck everyone froze including the other fighters at the hulking figure of the death knight threatening the Uchiha's life. Sasuke's glare hardened as he was about to shout but was hit with a small pebble on the back of his head he turned around to see the Anbu from Konoha shaking his head at him, begrudgingly Sasuke withdrew. Hanabi and Hanada began with an exchange of palm strikes with Hanabi being of the traditionalist Hyuga stance whilst Hanada is more lean which allowed her to fall back and sent a kick up her young sister's stomach making her stagger back Hanada then stood back up immediately and fired a palm strike to her sister's face. Hanabi managed to plant her feet back and in the last second just as she inches away from being eliminated. The young heiress fell on her knees breathing rigidly glaring at her older sister who kept a neutral expression Hanabi wiped the saliva off of her face before she lunged forwards to hit Hanada with another palm strike but Hanada blocked and allowed the strike to swim through her arm as it brought Hanabi closer for Hanada to grab and give her a German suplex. A move which she learned thanks to Naruto when he had her and her group train for upcoming battles this move sent shocks at Hanabi's neck base making her remain still for Hanada to get up and kick her in the stomach so hard she rolled out of the ring Hanada Hayuga wins. The cheers became harder and more fired up as more and more Konoha shinobi are losing while Konoha were becoming more agitated not more so than Hisashi farce. Hanada used an illegal move. Next thing Hisashi and his entourage knew someone flew right to them and landed before them with a bow, Demigir raised his head up and met the surprised and fearful expressions of the Hyuga clan which he enjoyed Hisashi Hyuga if you are unpleased then file a complaint through the proper channels Lord Ains isn't going to take any disturbance of peace lightly. The dangerous tone of voice made Hisashi gulp as he sat back down whilst Demigir flew away, the Hyuga clan head looked to his disowned daughter as she left victorious. Omoe and Jago were equals with the Kumo Nin managing to land a few well-placed hits at the monk before he finished it off with a palm strike to the stomach that made the monk skid until he was out of the arena Omoe wins. Omoe breathed a sigh of relief as he gave a thumbs up to his master killer B in cage A. Kiba like Sakura was also charging around blindly but fiercer but like Mikuritsuchi could easily block and counter with kicks to the mad dogs on his nose breaking it. The Inazuka held his bloody nose glaring murderously at the smirking Iwa Nin letting out another snarl as he rushes at Kuritsuchi but she easily evaded and caught him by his waist before she launched him backwards landing him out Kuritsuchi wins. Kiba didn't like this though and rushed at Kuritsuchi who had her back turned to him but like with Sasuke he was caught by a death knight which kept the mutt in his clutches. Tsunade gulped and mentally cursed the Inazuka for his animalistic behavior which now every other non-Konoha guest is jumping on with jeers and insults. Choji breathed raggedly as Shizuka was easily evading his heavy blows with her agility as she stood on the top of his head the fat nin of Konoha looked up with anger as he clapped his hands up hoping to crush Shizuka but she easily landed down and sent a punch up his lower jaw which paralyzed him somewhat making him wobble around before Shizuka punched him a second time on his stomach making him fall backwards and out of the ring Shizuka wins. More and more cheers are heard from the crowd as yet another Konoha ate the dust. Karui and Asuka were equally matched with both prowess and skills, Karui threw a heavy hook towards Asuka who caught it as she was about to counter only for Karui to counter on her own as she caught Asuka from behind before she pushed her forwards landing her face first onto the stone then caught Asuka by her waist and sent her backwards landing her back first out of the arena Karui wins. Kahio didn't fare well against her opponent who easily could feel her movements and vibrations shown as she towered over Kahio who raised her arms up in surrender Toph Bifong wins. 
Matsuri evaded another attack from Shikimaru though the Nara wasn't allowed to use his shadow binding he was still a Jonin one of the best Konoha had produced placing Matsuri on the ropes as she was in a worse shape than he is. Shikimaru sent a slap to Matsuri's cheek making her stagger back as more and more slaps came her way until she edges away from falling off. Come on Shikimaru. Ino screamed hoping to at least one victory for them it was bad enough Sasuke lost but now Hanabi. Kiba and Choji not to mention Guy too as Sakura was predicted. Shikimaru grimaced at the annoying shriek from his teammate which was what Matsuri needed as she jumped over Shikimaru getting off guard before drop kicked him on the back sending him out of the arena Matsuri wins. The cheers were higher and higher as Konoha failed to win a single fight something that wasn't lost on them. The first game hand to hand fighting was a total loss for Konoha as Toph won beating Kanichi in the final. Ains stood before the blind girl handing her the trophy congratulations Toph. Thanks Lord Ains the blind accepted her trophy as she waved it around. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. What was that? Tsunade bellowed at the Konoha nin who were kneeling before her all of them angry with the exception of Guy who accepted and Shikimaru who was annoyed this was the first game of a much larger gaming tournament and the first impression we made for this new enemy of ours Ains is that we're no threat to him at all. Fear not Hokage for we still have other opportunities to make up for outlaws guy spoke with remorse it may started bad at first but as long as we continue well win. Tsunade gritted her teeth as she must keep her tongue and moral high they still have more games to play and win not to mention Hisashi will also need her signature for handling Hinata's situation. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. The first phase of the plan is going well my lord Demigir spoke to his master kneeling before his throne not only are Konoha are losing their cool but more of the neutral daimyos are getting impressed by the performance of the other shinobi villages for lasting longer and winning fights but of course we had to make sure they don't all of the fights and much less against our own. That is correct after all Jago and Asuka weren't among our elites simply normal subjects and our training regime had helped both Omoi and Karui beat them however Toph was a different kind of animal Ains spoke turning to his magical mirror watching all of his guests most of them seemed happy with Matsuri getting praised like Omoi and Karui while Kuritsuchi is celebrating and Shizuka is having a meeting with her Kunoichis and Kahio is being comforted by her comrades. The first game is a total loss for Konoha and a blow to Sasuke Uchiha's pride soon the Uchiha will be convinced to try his defecation attempt a second time only now there is currently no Orochimaru to house him but it'll be a rematch Ains would settle. The bleachers were filled before a giant track field stretching to thousands of tracks easily filled with many obstacles from ravens to high fences welcome ladies and gentlemen to the next game of the wave tournament the 100 miles race spoke the blonde announcer this race is meant to show who is the best rider on mounts for this to be a fair competition Lord Ains had dictated that any large four-legged animal can be used as a mount now let's meet our competitors. Zaryu Sushasha servant of Ains Ulgaon representing Wave Country and this my companion and Mount Rororo a four-headed hydra the shinobis were both terrified and intrigued of this giant mount believing that it could be summon related to the snakes. Tamari sister of the case cage Gara representing Suna and Wind Country and this my Mount Kamatari the blonde Kunoichi introduced herself petting the one-eyed weasel. Kiri Medic Nin of Kiri representing after mentioned village and water country along with my companion Appa spoke the young man next to a giant sea otter. Hear me here yo I am Killer B brother of the Rakage representing Kumo and Lightning Country with my companion Ponta a parting gift from my fellow musician Enka Sabu well when this fools the eight-tailed Jinkruki rapped much to the annoyance of his older brother. Akatsuchi representing Iwa and Earth Country and this my Mount Hihimaru the large Iwa Nin patted the giant baboon next to him. I am Kiba Inazuka and this my companion Akamaru we're going to make up for that loss we don't care whether you have giant snakes or weird rodents we're going to win the arrogant Inazuka introduced himself. Other consisted of samurais from spring, vegetable and bird countries using a giant white tiger, a giant boar and a flightless giant bird respectively. All right competitors on your marks spoke the judge carrying a giant gun get set and go. Bang. With the firing of the gun the mounts ran forwards carrying their masters on their backs, the first track was a normal one which favored Akamaru who easily bypassed the others ha take that. Kiba's celebration proved to be short lived as a spinning jump hit him in the face staggering him back whilst the others easily catch up and jumped over the spinning obstacle towards the next part of the race track, which was a swampy area since they had been traveling through the swamps of their homeland Zaryusu and Rororo took the lead easily evading and going past the jumping flying fish and wrapping snakes. 
Tamari's weasel cut through the animals along with the vines while the samurai followed a similar tactic. Kiri and his mount took to the water swimming underneath to evade those obstacles and catching up to Zaryusu. Akatsuchi and Killer B easily crushed and cut their way all the while Kiba who entered the swampy area last was having difficulty as the numerous smells were getting to both him and his partner making them easily hit by flying fish wrapping vines and the like shown as the other racers already bypassed the swampy area towards the next area being a fiery field of burning coal. Rororo would had problems in the past going through here but long years under Nazarick had toughened the hydra as it ran through the fiery coals. Tamari used her wind style to fly both herself and her mount over the course and even by past Zaryusu passing the area before him. Kiri used his water techniques to cool down the coal allowing both himself and his partner safe passage while Akatsuchi and his mount had no issues walking through the coal much like Zaryusu and Rororo and Killer B along with the samurai had their mounts slam the ground so they can cut the coal and allow themselves safe passage. Kiba and Akamaru finally made it through the swampy area towards the burning coal area which everyone had already passed angering the mud and his companion who turned into a drill cutting their way through to the end catching up with the others in last place. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. The daimyos watched the race with smiles normally in this shinobi world all they get is fights so race like that is a nice change of pace to them. The water daimyo turned to Ains say sir Ains what is that creature your man is riding? It's a hydra and I appreciate the good eye you have water daimyo Ains answered giving praise to his fellow daimyo. Is there any possibility that we can buy one? The spring daimyo Koyuki asked it'll make for a good addition to one of my movies. Yes I am aware and rather I am a big fan of your movies spring daimyo hopefully we can work a deal after this. Asuma wasn't liking this Ains was already becoming popular with the other daimyos which will persuade him to side with their shinobi villages over Konoha and worst Kurenai's student was making a fool of himself still in last place after samurai. In hopes of salvaging things he kneeled to his daimyo's ear and whispered something Kaspond and nodded as he turned to Ains Sir Ains if it's not much an issue I would like to know if this hydra is a summoning contract. Ains turned to the supposed fire daimyo with a shake of his head I am afraid the hydra isn't a summoning creature it's a regular animal. Asuma turned back to the race focusing on Rororo the thing is a regular animal. Where the hell could this thing grow without being attacked by humans? Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. Back to the racing game the competitors found. Themselves in the next obstacle course being a track. Covered with slippery ice Rororo managed to keep its. Balance and skate the same with Tamari who still kept the lead using her weasel's proficiency with wind to slide through the ice the spring samurai followed the same tactic and Killer B simply had his mount tiptoe around the ice while the others were having difficulty catching up allowing the leads to reach the next phase of the race being the final stretch it started with Tamari still in the lead but Zaryusu began catching up to her along with Killer B and soon late the other competitors. The long road kept going on and on which prompted some of the competitors to slow down and converse the energy of their mounts which made Kiba smirk as he had his companion run faster and faster seeing the finish line. With a smirk so wide he was about to cross but Akamaru feeling the fatigue tripped and fell hey Akamaru what's wrong? The mutt couldn't answer only whimper and breath horribly the earth began to shake violently before Kiba and Akamaru were ran over by the other competitors crossing the finish line. We have a winner. The announcer screamed with excitement showing Zaryusu in first place, Tamari in second, Killer B in third, Akatsuchi in fourth, Kiri in sixth the Spring Samurai in seventh, the Bird Samurai in eighth, the Vegetable Samurai in ninth and lastly Kiba in tenth and last this was an exciting race ladies and gentlemen not only to see how good the mounts are but how talented and strategic their riders are. The crowd cheered for the skills they saw once again only Konoha weren't pleased as Kiba was last place once again falling another competition. Ains descended down to the winners holding a trophy giving it to Zaryusu Sasha congratulations Zaryusu Sasha and you as well Rororo. We both thank you very much Lord Ains the Lizardman and Hydra bowed lightly before their master. Ains turned to the other riders you all did well riders. The other lightly bowed in respect the other daimyos began to murmur between themselves this Ains guy is loved by not only his people but ours as well the water daimyo spoke. Maybe we can ask him for advice the earth daimyo spoke in agreement. I know I can use it the wind daimyo sighed deeply hoping to repair his relationship with Suna. Not to mention he commands respect the lightning daimyo added. Well I for certain would be interested in a bigger trade agreement and some movies Kyuki said with reddened cheeks with both Haruna and Toki nodding their heads as they turned to their fellow female daimyo. 
Can we be part of these movies as well? They asked at the same time. Asuma narrowed his eyes at the overwhelming positive opinions the new wave daimyo is getting the Hokage and council wouldn't like this. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. Asuma was correct in his assumption after another celebration for the winner Tsunade called him in for report about the interactions amongst the daimyos and she wasn't liking how popular the wave daimyo is becoming at this point another wave campaign would be disastrous. Knock knock. Lady Hokage Hisashi spoke from the other side as he let himself in without permission carrying scattered and tattered papers with two black eyes. What did you do now? Tsunade demanded. Me and my clansmen wanted an audience with the wave daimyo regarding Hinata. Tsunade sighed internally holding herself back from hitting the Hyuga clan head what did I tell you? This a clan matter the Hokage has no saying Hisashi quickly rebuffed the guards actually beat us and told us not to bother their daimyo. These fools even dared to say if we weren't guests they would have had us executed the nerve of them. Asuma's expression matched that of the Hokage about the idiocy of the Hyuga clan head Hisashi as much as you like to boast about clans and how the Hyugas are the most influential in Konoha please keep in mind to the daimyos it means nothing. What do you know? Hisashi quickly retorted your clan has no special bloodline nor made investments of our level. Silence. Tsunade quickly demanded the last thing I need right now is infighting amongst our numbers, Hisashi what Asuma said is true and right now all the daimyos are being swayed by Ains regardless of how you view your riches no they're nothing compared to daimyos especially when they all decide to fund the other villages or even Hinata's guerrilla warfare against us when they do that ill extort your clan with the heaviest taxes known in history got it. Hisashi girt his teeth in anger before he turned around and left what the three didn't know is that above them hiding in the ceiling is a rat that has a paper on its face resembling a yellow eye. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. Kiba you so useless Sakura criticized the Muchinobi if Sasuke was in that race he would have won. Shut it. Kiba yelled Sasuke is no better than me he lost the hand to hand combats too. I didn't lose to a girl Sasuke retorted as he took a sip of alcohol. The girl was the granddaughter of the Suchikage who on the other hand lost to a bald midget Kiba retorted back with a victorious smirk causing Sasuke to break the glass activating his Chidori. Bang. The Uchiha and the rest of them were stopped when the bartender shot a bullet inches away from Sasuke's face scratching him. Klavu also known as Su Chef placed the bazooka away please keep your voices down or leave. Before the three of them could retort they were caught by Ino. Choji and Shikimaru quickly bowing and taking their leave well these guys are terrible shinobis. Told Yamai said to her companion and boyfriend Andy Bogard as the couple enjoyed some shots getting flirtier with one another. Watching the Konoha group taking their leave was a frog wearing the same piece of paper the rat that spied on Tsunade did. Opening parenthesis comma closing parenthesis. As Lord Ains suspected Konoha errant united spoke a short young woman with messy green hair and two red demonic horns with a squirrel tail wearing the same piece of papers as the animals on her face along with a red kimono many in fighting are occurring. Good Bao Huang Ains praised her an NPC created by Ains Ulgaon member Kaido mostly working for intelligence she served them good in Yggdrasil death game and Ains himself since he began his spree of conquest. Lord Ains couldn't we execute Hisashi Hayuga? Albedo asked with gritted teeth. Ains remained calm it wasn't the first time he refrained his subordinates from killing pawns even if they were egregious and rude individuals as Bao Huang had revealed the Konoha shinobi errant united sure they have a lot of strength thanks to the Kayubi chakra but put that aside and they would be the weakest village. The weakest weren't they considered the top dog of the five great shinobi villages? Mayor asked. At one time it was during its founding making deals with many clans and keeping the strongest of the nine-tailed beasts however under Hiruzen's late reign he made some terrible decisions such as giving the civilian council a voice in order to better administer matters. The civilians he gave them this power were originally competent but soon after Danzo Hiruzen's rival began whispering to them threatening their lives in order to fund himself and they allowed their incompetent children to inherit their positions and it had been a downward spiral since then there was some hope when Hiruzen retired and named Minato Namikaze his successor the young Hokage had connections to the fire capital and could get rid of Danzo and the incompetent civilians and lessen the influence of the corrupt Hyuga and Uchiha clans but it was never to be Ains answered. I see these infightings would fracture this illusion of a united Konoha and one of them will give us a reason to invade Demigir revealed as expected of you my lord. Well it'll be more than that Ains said surprising the floor guardians. What do you mean? Shaltier asked. 
Where's the fun in spoiling the surprise? Ains asked with glowing red eyes. Thanks for 